yards last year against LSU. Kicking off for Marshall, J.R. Jenkins, the freshman from Loganville, Georgia. Getting steady. Set to make history here in Pontiac, Michigan. The Ford Motor City Bowl. Lucas and Avery, the two deep men. And they are going to kick away from Avery. It'll be Lucas at his 15-yard line. 20, 25, cuts it up 30, has an opening 40, 45, or 44, actually. And he is brought down by Albert Barber. Take a look at Ole Miss offensively. Redshirt senior quarterback Stuart Patrick set single-season school records for completions, yards passing, and total offense. His prime target, All-American sophomore tight end Rufus French, leads the team in receptions, 43 on the year. And up front, fifth-year senior Boyd Kitchens, nicknamed Father Time by the coaches, he has fought back from two serious knee injuries to play all 11 games here in 1997. The scrimmage a 44 yard line Ole Miss first play of the game Patrick's looking deep has a receiver downfield heard 15 10 and he is brought down at the one half yard line Jerry Oregon when they started the ball game against Air Force threw a long pass to their wide receiver Johnson hit it for a touchdown and never looked back Ole Miss trying to do the very same thing. Stuart Patridge with the pump and go to Grant Hurd. He just ran by the defender. Good fake. There's the pump. There's the deep throw right on the money to the 6-3 Grant Hurd. Celebration by Stuart Patridge, who's had a great senior year. Now you know why. He's got 2,600 yards passing in 1997. The give to Avery. And on the second play of the game, Ole Miss scores. Well, I'll say the same thing I said in the Oregon game. <laughs> Sometimes you can score too fast and you go to sleep, but uh, this Ole Miss football team has worked very hard. They've overcome a lot of obstacles. Uh, the NCAA, the probation, uh, and th th they have worked very hard for this bowl game, so I think they will stay alert. Well, if you turned your head, a 54-yard completion on the opening play to Grant Hurd to the half-yard line, and then Avery over from a half yard away, 24 seconds, and Steve Lindsay will kick the extra point to make it 7-zip Ole Miss. We told you, you're in for an offensive explosion. They had to change the bulbs in the scoreboard at halftime. Well, the key was Marshall wanted to come out and set the tempo, and so did Ole Miss. They wanted to both come out and, and try to see who could set the tempo in this ball game. Now Marshall has to answer the Ole Miss score. Tommy Tuberville. There is a look at Bob Pruitt, realizing he's got a lot of weapons to counter with. And there is John Avery. Got a chance to meet his idol yesterday morning here at the Silver Dome, Barry Sanders, and We'll tell you about that conversation a little later on. An impressive senior running back from Asheville, North Carolina. And in 24 seconds, Ole Miss is up 7-zip. That's a coach's worst nightmare. The first play to get hit with a bomb. We played Texas when I was in Pittsburgh in the Blue Bonnet Bowl game. We closed that bowl down. And on the first play, Texas hit us with, hit us with, hit us with a bomb and took a 7-0 lead. Took a lot out of our ball club. Let's see if Marshall can respond here. All right, there's Lindsey to kick it off. Maurice Hines and Nathan Poole. A freshman and sophomore deep to receive. A high end over end kick. And Hines will get down it in the end zone. Marshall will start first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Take a look at the Marshall offense. It all begins with Trigger Man, all-conference quarterback Chad Pennington, who set an NCAA record with 39 touchdown passes as a sophomore. Among his receivers, well, All-American Randy Moss might be the man, but it's junior LaVorne Colclaw, who caught the longest TD pass of the year, a 92-yarder versus Kent. And up front, senior co-captain John Wade is rated among the top two or three centers in the nation. Here's a look at Randy Moss, six foot five, 210 pounds sophomore from Rand, West Virginia. Single setback is Chapman. Pennington back to pass, looking for Moss downfield, passing at the 40 yard line, 35, 30, 20, and Randy Moss will score. Play. 
plays and two touchdowns. Well, Jerry, right away, they're going to try to go to their big play receiver, Chad Pennington, who Bob Pruitt says is as good a quarterback as I've been around. That's Danny Warfel also in that group. Randy Moss just ran right by Malika Griffin, number 34, shows the speed, the ability to stretch out, make the catch, the touchdown. Well, Billy Milicevic will make it all tied up at seven apiece. Well, in 41 seconds of the first quarter of the very first Ford Motor City Bowl, we have two touchdowns, and we're all tied. That's all right, in case you were making a sandwich and missed the uh, start of the game, you've only missed three plays, two touchdowns, and 14 points. I think both secondaries were making sandwiches there in the, in the first play. 80 yards to Randy Moss, and let's try it again. See if they'll kick it off to Avery. We can, nah, sky kick, short kick. Ken Lucas takes it at the 22, across the field, near the 30, and that's where Ole Miss will start. Albert Barber, the linebacker, making the stop. A lot of respect for John Avery to kick away from him. He do not want the ball close to him. Take a look at Marshall defensively. Senior co-captain B.J. Cohen led the team in sacks this year with 13 from his rush in position. First team all-conference middle linebacker Larry McLeod not only led the team in tackles but ranked second in school history for that category. And in the secondary, Rogers Beckett and Larry Moore, both second team all-match selections are tied for the team lead with three interceptions each. All right, fourth play of the football game. And they will give it on it to Avery. Left side has some running room, 35-40 and raced out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Jerry, John Avery is the fastest player in the SEC. They like to get him the ball outside. He's a better outside runner than he is an inside runner. He picks up some very good blocks on the outside from Corey Peterson. And he got up limping, uh, but... Um as he trots off the field, he lost his shoe. He played one game this year on turf against Tulane and uh, got injured in that ball game, but I think the turf's going to help him in this football game. All right. Avery goes to the sidelines. They have that shoe put on and a little bit of a smile from Tommy Tuberville. Deuce McAllister, a true freshman in as the lone setback. Patrick, back to pass, has a receiver, and the receiver gets tangled up with the linebacker on the coverage, Andre O'Neill, the sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia. Pass intended for Rufus French, the tight end. I guess see no evil, feel no evil there. I mean, there was a, a collision made there. Andre O'Neill uh, collisioned the wide receiver, but the officials felt like it was a no-call situation. That'll bring up the second and ten. Earl Miss. Line of scrimmage, their own 44-yard line. Four wide receivers, slot back. Here's McAllister, Patrick, looks across the middle, and he will go down. And about the line of scrimmage, B.J. Cohen, the rush in, who leads the team in sacks this year, gets his 14th of the season. Yeah, B.J. Cohen is the big play defensive player on this Marshall defense. He's voted first team all Mac by the coaches and you can see how he's able to come on the outside he's a wide rush and he beats the block at Devon Colburn all right third and ten for Ole Miss Marshall brings the pressure from outside pass to French at the 45 yard line he will get about three that will be short of the first down. John Grace, the weak side linebacker there, to make the stop. And a good series by the Marshall defense. Of course, John Avery played one play and then went to the sidelines. Ole Miss is not the same football team without John Avery on that field. All right, there's a look at Randy Moss back to receive the punt. Now, i got to remind you that Tommy Tuberville, they call him the Mississippi Gambler. And he has faked a lot of punts this year. Back to kick is Kevin Cooper, and he will kick it a very, very high kick, and Moss will call for the fair catch at the 25-yard line. They will mark it at the 24 for Marshall's second possession. Take a look at Ole Miss defensively. Up front, senior defensive end Andre Harrison leads the team in sacks, maybe the best run defender. Middle linebacker Nate Wayne, the three-year starter, is the emotional leader of this unit. That's why he wears number 38 in memory of Chucky Mullins. 
And in the secondary, senior Malika Griffin is tied for the team lead with three interceptions. But he draws the unenviable task of having to cover six foot five Randy Moss. That was him trying to cover him on the opening play a moment ago. Line of scrimmage, a 19 yard line. First and 10, second possession for Marshall. Chapman up over the 25, near a first down. Well, the importance of the running game tonight for Marshall, Jerry, is when, when Moss caught that first pass, now all of a sudden it changes your defensive structure. Now you have to provide with some linebacker help, some safety help on Moss. That opens up the running game. Chad Pennington's checking at the line of scrimmage. He's counting the number of people in that tackle-to-tackle -tackle box. All right, four wide receivers on the first down after the gain of 11 by Chapman. Pennington checking off the line of scrimmage and will give it to Chapman. Runs into his own offensive lineman and still manages to get five yards. Fumbles the football right into the hands of an Ole Miss defender. It'll be Ole Miss football. As Chapman was hit, the ball bounced out up in the air. It looked like Malika Griffin, the left cornerback, may have made the initial hit. Well, here's the reason they're running the football. There's six men in the box. Now the tackle on Chapman. The ball's going to fly right up in the air. Picked off by Ole Miss in great field position on the 38-yard line. Good block. There's the hit. Brock Kreitz. And Ole Miss in good, good position here. So it was Malika Griffin. That charge the ball loose. Brock Price, the weak side linebacker and defensive co-captain. As John Avery cuts to the outside, will cut it back inside, and he will have enough for the first down. Jerry, I think the big question for Marshall tonight is whether the defensive line, who's not very big and hasn't played the caliber of competition, the offensive line, they've played great teams all year. I don't want to say that but they haven't played as good an offensive line as they're playing tonight in Ole Miss. And whether or not they can hold up is a big question. There's about a 40-pound weight advantage, 40 to 45 pounds for Ole Miss offensively over a thundering herd defensive front. First and 10, and they will give the inside hand off to Avery. He stutter steps and will fight his way for about seven or eight yards down near the 20-yard line. Well, I said something early, and I want to go back to it. Turf helps a running back in this area. He's so quick. Uh, John Avery is a back that can make a cut on a dime, and with the turf, he just increases his speed uh, against the defense. He's a great outside runner. He's run the last two plays inside, showing a lot of uh, good effect on that also. You make a point, Coach. It's very... It's incredible that Avery has the kind of numbers he has playing on grass for most of the year. Once again, the give to Avery. Eli Andy, the fullback, trying to get a block, but they swarm Avery back at about the 27-yard line. B.J. Cohen again on the outside, number five. He's the best, uh, one of the top defenders for Marshall. They're going to try to stretch this thing out, but you can see Marshall move exactly with it. Keep parallel, keep pad on pad. Uh, a good job by the corner, Larry Moore, who stopped that play, and then B.J. Cohen made the tackle. Well, with a loss of eight, that'll bring up a third and 12. Line of scrimmage, the Marshall 29-yard line. In the first quarter, all tied at seven apiece. Shotgun for Stewart Patridge at Ole Miss. Patridge looking straight upfield, getting some pressure. And now releases the football. Has a receiver, but a great defensive play by B.J. Summers, the senior quarterback out of Forestville, Maryland. Good job by B.J. Summers. Stuart Patrick had a good time to throw the ball because they went to a two-back set, and both backs helped on pass protection. Here's going to be a throw to Andre Roll, number five, and you're going to see number eight, B.J. Summers, knock that football away. Sheldon Morris, number 86, uh, was the receiver. 46-yard field goal attempt for Steve Lindsay. He is three for five from this distance on the year. It is long enough, and it is wide rock. Right. 
So still in the first quarter here at the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl, we are all knotted at seven apiece. Seven, seven, Ole Miss and Marshall. That is Bobby Killian there. He is the snapper for the field goals. And a moment ago, Coach, this 46-yarder was wide right. Yeah, bad snap. It's going to bounce back uh, to the holder, Randall Green. He gets a turn. He gets the seams away and uh, just a sliced it to the right. All right, wide right. So we're all knotted at seven apiece. Possession. Marshall. And they fake the ball to Chapman. Looking again for Moss downfield. And... Malika Griffin right with him, step for step, and the ball is overthrown. When you talked to Malika Griffin last night, and, and I know they feel like they've played against receivers just as good as Randy Moss, but Randy Moss had a step on Malika Griffin again that time. What Malika wanted to do last night, they talked about the fact that they wanted to be able to challenge him with the bump and run, trying to keep him from getting off the line of scrimmage with those long legs and getting started. But that first play we saw a little bit ago, he gets started in a hurry. Well, he caught a cold because he ran by him so fast, and on that play, <laughs> He showed great speed. Again, Malika Griffin's going to have to give a little room. All right, second and ten. Shotgun for Chad Pennington. Getting some pressure from outside. The quick flip to Chapman, and he will maybe get a couple. Marshall's a big screen team because when you have a weapon like Randy Moss, then everything rolls to Randy Moss. So you like the screens to, to Chapman and to LB Kopal. The other receiver, number 18, he becomes big in the plants of Marshall because everybody tries to stop Randy Moss. All right, third and nine. Randy Moss has come off the playing field. Three wide, make it four wide receivers. And he's back to pass, gets some pressure. Has a man up about two yards shy of the first down. That is LaVorn Coldclaw, LV they call him. That'll bring up a fourth in about a yard and a half. Well, that's the player I was talking about, Jerry. L.B. Kokloff, he is 6'3", 209-pound junior. Got the eight touchdown catches this year. Great route runner. He caught six passes and a touchdown versus West Virginia. A little too early to gamble here. I think you got to punt the football. Well, I think they, the players are trying to convince Bobby Pruitt to, yeah, to go for it. Time convincing that. Man. And now a little bit of confusion, and we will have timeout on the Ole Miss side of the field. So timeout with eight minutes and eight seconds remaining here in the first quarter in Pontiac, Michigan. We are all knotted at seven apiece. Team in. Ole Miss was caught in with too many people because they had the regular defense in one to get their punt return on. Now they'll also punt safe here. Now Ole Miss is looking for a fake. Chris Hansen back to kick, the junior from Sonoya, Georgia. He launched a 70-yarder this year against West Virginia in the opener. No pressure. End over end kick. And taken at the 25-yard line by Corey Peterson. As we check in down the sidelines with Dave Ryan. Well, guys, there are some injury problems at Ole Miss to talk about. Wide receiver Grant Hurd, who had that long catch early in the game for the Rebels, bruised his right knee on that same play. Now he's got a tight wrap on the knee, and they just sent him back into the lineup for the Rebels, and he's going to give it a go. He's had problems doing his warm-ups on the sidelines. Also, an injury to Terrence Metcalf, the left guard, number 79, a strained right shoulder. But trainer Tim Mullen says, just so he should be okay to return to action. Guys. Well, there's Metcalf. SEC all-freshman team. 6'3", 302-pounder out of Clarksdale, Mississippi. First and 10, Ole Miss, 25-yard line. They fake it to Avery and give it on the flanker around Ken Lucas, and he will get nothing. Well, so far in this first quarter, it's been a highlight film for B.J. Cohen. He plays the outside linebacker position. When the ball goes away, he stays home. He does not chase the football and was right there for the reverse. You'll see number five, B.J. Cohen. He just sits there, sees the reverse. Now he makes the tackle on Ken Lucas. Why, well, Lucas was a sitting duck when he came around. Cohen right in his face. The senior from Connolly, Georgia. First team, all Mid-American Conference. Five-yard loss will bring up second and 15. Inside handoff, and that is Avery once again, and boy, is he quick. 
Coach just said you can't tackle him in a phone booth, and he danced around a couple of potential ta potential tacklers there. Well, you talked about Jerry. His idol is uh, Barry Sanders, and he met him the other day, and the uh, coaches were telling me how much of a comedian that uh, John Avery is, but when he finally met Barry Sanders, he couldn't speak. You know, he couldn't say anything, but when he finally did speak, I asked John, what did you say to him? He said, I just thank the good Lord for someone like him to be a role model for people like me, both on and off the play field. That tells very you a lot nice. about what yeah, very nice. kind of person Avery is. And he has stood up at the line of scrimmage on third and short. They have lost about a yard. John Grace in from the weak side linebacker spot there to make the stop, and that will make Ole Miss have to kick it away. And all this is doing is this is giving Marshall hope because when they came into this football game, they were playing against the Southeastern Conference team. Everybody said they may not be able to match up. The longer this game goes, the more chance that Marshall has to win this football game because they're starting to believe they can hang in here with an SEC football team. All right, there's a look at Reagan King, the redshirt freshman from Ackerman, Mississippi. Averaging 41 yards a punt, 53 yards is long on the year, and back to receive Randy Moss. Nice high spiral, Moss waving for the fair catch at the 26-yard line. 43-yard kick by Reagan King. Well, join ESPN tomorrow for a college football doubleheader. At 2.30, Southwest Athletic Conference champion Southern takes on South Carolina State in the McDonald's Heritage Bowl. Then at 8, New Mexico, led by quarterback Graham Lee, battles the Wildcats of Arizona in the Inside.com Bowl. That's a college football doubleheader tomorrow on ESPN. I was on the plane with that Southern team as they were going to Atlanta. They have some big players. They've got a good football team. Oh, indeed they do. Should be quite a football game there in the Georgia Dome. Now Moss, bottom of your screen, on Malika Griffin as Pennington throws in the other direction for LV, LaVorne Colclaw. And he will get maybe a yard and a half, two yards. Well, Bob Pruitt on the sideline, the head coach, is going to continually say to Tim Nunez, the offensive quarter, coordinator, get the ball to Randy Moss. Uh, and what Bob Pro was talking about Randy Moss for the ball game, he said last year in the Southern Conference track meet, Randy Moss worked out for one day, may have shook his leg, and then went out and uh, won the 255 meters in the track championship for Marshall. So just tells you what kind of athlete Randy Moss is. A remarkable athlete indeed. Six foot five, 210 pounds, a 42540. As Pennington again gets the ball to the cold ball and there to make the stop, Walker Jones, the senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Well, what Marshall's trying to do is on the outside, they're trying to get the ball because they've got three receivers against two defensive backs, but there's the missed block right here. All right, Walker Jones fighting through that that block to be able to make the stop to bring up a third down situation. Third and eight for the Thundering Herd. Terry, now they've got all wide receivers to the left. they got one-on-one, -on -one, they believe, to Randy Moss. Uh, that was the opening play of the game. They look toward Moss. He tries to dance by Griffin, and he throws it left side. Has it completed up at the 35-yard line. And that is Nathan Poole, the slot back. Boy, he worked hard, Nathan Poole, to try to re reach that first down marker. Chad Pennington taking again what the defense gives him. It looked like Randy Moss was one-on-one, -on -one, but they had the safety over the top, so he went to the backside. All right, the officials conferring. Gary Thigpen there, the right cornerback, chased him out of bounds right at the first down mark. The all-important spot. We have a fumble going forward out of bounds. By rule, the ball is returned to the spot of the fumble. We'll have an official timeout for a measurement. All right, that pretty well explains what happened. So fumbling it out of bounds, didn't get the first down, can't do that anymore. Not in college football. I keep blaming Kenny Staver for that rule. <laughs> but what a great idea it was, huh? All right, let's see if we can possibly see what happened. Nathan Poole made the reception and was trying to dance free to get the first down. A missed tackle right in the secondary by Timothy Strickland, number three. And then you see the, the gang tackle and the ball drop out of his hands. 
looked like he was reaching the ball with his right hand toward the sticks when the ball came out. Marshall's going to go for this, try to draw Ole Miss offside. Quarterback sneak for Doug Chapman. Well, fourth and about three inches. You've got a six foot three, 208 pound quarterback in Chad Pennington. Sneak it, and boy, he didn't get much. Jerry, he didn't need much. He just needed that little inch, and he followed John Wade to center, who's 6'6", 302 pounds, and a lot of the pro players feel like he's in the top three centers in the country. Here's the line of scrimmage, the push by Big John Wade, and the first down for Chad Pennington. You know, Tim Nunez says of John Wade, his center said, I have never seen a guy 300 pounds that quick. I mean, he's incredibly quick and maybe one of the best pass blockers in the country. And the first player in Marshall history to go to the senior bowl. Four wide receivers once again. First and ten. Marshall on the drive. Their own territory. They give the ball to Chapman and he is met in the backfield. A great effort by Morris Scott, the junior left end. The, the big question for Marshall on offensive, the offensive side of the ball, can their tackles hold up against the two defensive ends? Because what you have outside for Ole Miss is so much speed and quickness for a Scott, number 95, and that's the key right here, the key block on the outside on Morris Scott. He comes around that block and makes the hit on Doug Chapman. All right, no gain, second and 10. Randy Moss, the lone receiver, topping her screen. Pennington looks to the inside and has Poole once again, and he is thrown out of bounds in Ole Miss territory at about the 38-yard line. Gain of 25. Jerry, they're working on Malik Griffin now. They're, they're trying to go to his side. They feel like they have something over on that side against number 34, Malik Griffin, the uh, young corner, senior corner. He's 5'8". a look at Malika Griffin, the senior. You mentioned he's a track star at Ole Miss. 55 meter and 100 meters indoor and outdoor track star for the Rebels. Thundering herd drive continues. First and 10 at the 39 yard line. Chapman cuts it back. Will get three and is met by a swarm of Rebels at about the 36. This is happening at the line of scrimmage. Chad Pennington, the quarterback, who Bob Pruitt said is the smartest and best quarterback I've ever been around. And he was on Steve Spurrier's staff and uh, Danny Werfel, and he, he has tremendous respect for Danny Werfel, but he says Chad Pennington deserves to be right up there with the people they're talking about, the future Heismans. He thinks he's that good. Pennington is seven for eight, 121 yards. And we still have a couple minutes to play in the first quarter. That tells you how good that young man is as a redshirt sophomore. As the play clock expires, and Marshall will get a five-yard penalty. Hey, talk about Chad Pennington. Uh, came to Marshall as a freshman, figuring he'd redshirt. All of a sudden, the third game, both Three quarterbacks were knocked out. He played the entire season, 14 touchdown passes, 14 interceptions. Eric Kresser transferred the next year from Florida. He battled him to the last scrimmage. They gave Eric Kresser the job. He redshirted him, and now he's back for the third, uh, his third year here, and he's led this Marshall team to the Motor City Classic here. All right, second and 13, and he will hand it off to Chapman, who dances by one tackler, has an opening in the secondary, down the 25-yard line. Gain of 19 yards. He breaks one more tackle from Jason Klingen, and he scores. Trying to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, Doug Chapman. Now watch. There's a block right here. It's a good block on the outside. Opens it up. And then a good move against the linebacker. Spearman, number four, and Chapman's in the secondary. There's the missed tackle by Spearman, number four. Now there's nobody until Jason Klingen, number 23, makes the tackle. And he just gets him by the right shoe. Low turner in as a setback. The in striker screen to Moss. He dances around and draws a lot of attention. He will lose about three. Well, they had that diagnosed. 
figure Randy Moss, I figure he's going to get the ball 10, 12 times a game. And uh, he's caught one touchdown pass already. They tried to get him a screen against Tommy Tuberville's defense, but they were able to see that. The backers played it very well. Tommy Tuberville knowing that he's going to have at least one guy, if not two, when they can, shadow Randy Moss. And, of course, Marshall countering with the fact that they want to have as many wide receivers to try to get man coverage one-on-one, -on -one, which is exactly what they will have on this second and 13. But Marshall Charge will call Marshall timeout and talk it over. Timeout. As the play clock was about to expire once again, and rather than lose five yards, Chad Pennington will take some time. The best pregame show on TV brings you the latest from the NFL playoffs with interviews, analysis, the latest news, and more. NFL Countdown tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. and Sunday at noon. And after the playoff games, join ESPN both nights at 7.30 for NFL Primetime. That's NFL Countdown tomorrow morning at 11.30, NFL Primetime at 7.30 on ESPN. Jerry, in the old days when they had the Tangerine Bowl, the Mid-American used to play the SEC. In uh, 73, Miami of Ohio had a great ball club. Uh, they beat Florida 16-7, and they went back in 74, beat Georgia 21-10. Back in 75, beat South Carolina 20-7. So the Mid-American is an underrated football conference. Uh, Toledo beat Purdue this year. Miami of Ohio beat uh, Virginia Tech. So it's a league that sent a lot of good athletes. Talking about good athletes, take a look where this guy right here, Chad Pennington, ranked among the NCAA stats as a player, as a quarterback. TD passes first, 39, passing yards sixth, and passing efficiency 151.9 in the top 10 in three categories. You guys don't do that from Powder Puff on the way to pros. Did it one year. All right, shotgun formation, second and 13. Pennington looking to his right as a receiver, and the ball is tipped away by Malika Griffin. Well, they're working on Malika, but he made the play on this one. He was able to get his left hand in there and knock the ball away from L.B. Kokloff. Nice post throw by Chad Pennington, but Malika Griffin played it very well. That'll bring up a third and 13. Marshall's had success with the draw. They've had success running the football. 11th play of the drive for the Thundering Herd. 35 seconds remain here in the first quarter. Pennington pump fakes, looks right, and now will scamper left, tucks in runs, and he will be short of the first down. Johnny Jones, the left end, will run him out of bounds, about six yards shot. Jerry, Chad Pennington was trying to go to uh, Moss on the right side, but they bumped him, and then they put the safety over top of him. You're going to see Malika Griffin hit him at the line of scrimmage, try to knock him off a little bit, then the safety's going to pick him up a little deeper. And Randy Moss has to learn one thing. He's got to run this out all the way, every play when the ball's going away from him. Sometimes that's a little bit of a knock on Randy Moss is that when the ball doesn't go his way, that he doesn't go full speed. All right, Billy Malashevich attempting a 36-yard field goal. Malashevich, one of two from 30 to 39 yards. The kick is up, dead center, and it is good. All right, 10 to 7. And... If you missed the opening of the football game, fireworks exploded early here in the Ford Motor City Bowl. Very first play from scrimmage for Ole Miss, a 54-yard connection. Stewart Patrick to Grant Hurd, and the second play of the game, a half-yard dive by John Avery, 7-0. Marshall comes back, 80 yards, their very first play from scrimmage. Pennington to Moss at 7-7, seven to seven. and on that 36-yard field goal a moment ago by Milosevic, that's the scoring here in the first quarter, 10-7, favor of Marshall. Ole Miss needs to take advantage of the short kickoff here. They know they're not going to kick the ball to John Avery. They're going to switch positions in the back now. They're going to try to see if Marshall's alert here. They've moved John Avery over to the left side. They know that J.R. Jenkins, the freshman, has kicked the ball 
to this side of the field. No, he was he was aware of where it was, and he would kick the ball out of bounds. That's a way to keep it away from him. That's the respect you have for John Avery. I was in the uh, uh, watching a Virginia Virginia Tech or Virginia Auburn early in the year. Bill Polian, who now is with the the Colts, and a lot of pro scouts were sitting around watching highlights of John Avery. Great deal of respect for this young man. Pro people have. Oh, well, indeed, as well they should have. Bob Pruitt. Bob wanting to kick the ball to Avery. Take a look at the Marshall scoring drive. 12 plays, 54 yards, 5 minutes, 27 seconds. Malashevich, 36-yard field goal to put the Thundering Herd up by three. Ole Miss needs to go back to their game plan right now and settle down a little bit. Take advantage of the big offensive line. They will give it to Avery, what should be the final play of the first quarter. And he turns up the wick and will be chased out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. And we will, apparently will get one more play here in the first quarter. Rufus French, the all-conference tight end, a great block to be able to spring Avery on the corner. And they'll run the counter, Jerry, and then get them both, uh, both guards out in front of that counter play to try to get John Avery on the corner. Tommy Tuberville, the head coach, said he's the fastest player I've ever coached. Remember, he was a coach at Miami as an assistant under Dennis Erickson, so he had a lot of quick people in Miami, but he says John Avery's the fastest. All right, second and five. Patridge back to throw. Has a receiver wide open over the middle. Andre Roan, he will have the first down and more at midfield. He is out of bounds. And on the gain of 11, that will end the first quarter. Well, we told you it would be an offensive show. Football fireworks and starting in a hurry. Marshall's very first play from scrimmage. This 80-yard reception by guess who? Randy Moss and Marshall on the board. 10-7 at the end of a quarter. Randy Moss, that probably stands for really fast. 10-7, Marshall over Ole Miss at the end of a quarter. Ole Miss with the football at midfield. Patrick's looking downfield, wide open at the 38-yard line is the H-back, Andre Rohn, for a gain of 11. As we check in on the sidelines with Dave Ryan. Dave? Doctor, thanks very much. A couple of very distinguished guests with me here. John Engler is the governor for the state of Michigan. George Perlis, the executive director of the Ford Motor City Bowl. George, we'll start with you. A year and a half of work, a lot of effort. It's finally here, a great moment to kick off bowl week here on ESPN. I'm so happy. I don't know what to say. I'm excited about the people that came to, to uh, watch the game, but I'm more excited about the support we got from the governor and Mayor Moore and Mayor uh, Archer from Pontiac and Detroit and uh, Peter Secchi, our ambassador, and just everybody, Ford Motor Company. Congratulations on a job well done here. Thank you. Let's go to the governor now. This has got to be a very exciting time for you. We saw Michigan State play yesterday. Didn't do so well. you got Michigan coming up in the Rose Bowl. Uh, couldn't ask for any more here in the state. Well, it's football crazy state, and, and MAC is a very important conference. Three MAC members in Central, Eastern, and Western Michigan here. Uh, Marshall's a great champion, and this is a great bowl for the state. Hats off to the Ford Motor Company and George Perlis for putting it all together. Governor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Governor Engler, a big football fan, and George Perlis, what a job he and his staff have done to put this bowl game together for the very first year. All right, second and two. Ole Miss, they will give it to Avery out of the I formation. And flag on the play. We may have gotten a hold. would have been short of the first down anyway, but I think it's going to be Terrence Metcalf, number 79. Holding. Offense. 10 yards. Line of scrimmage. Replay second down. Well, that hurts, Jerry, because they had the first down, it looked like. Terrence Metcalf, Metcalf number 79, is going to get a hold right here. Kind of pull the nose guard. Gerardi Mercer. John Avery trying to cut back behind the hold, and 
That penalty will make it second and 11 for Ole Miss at the Marshall 38-yard line. 10-7 early in the second quarter. Pass complete down to the 28. That's Corey Peterson, the sophomore out of Germantown, Tennessee. Ole Miss is led by their quarterback, Stuart Patridge. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. The coach has talked about he's been the most valuable player of their offense. He threw for 234 yards in a 15-14 win over Mississippi State. When I talked to George Burles, he said that they were, Mississippi State was coming to this bowl. They were going to invite them. And Ole Miss beat them. Ole Miss uh, knocked their rival off in that bowl game and knocked them out of this bowl, too. That's the red shirt senior from Morgan City, Mississippi. Stuart Patridge, third and a couple. Patridge getting pressured. Gets it loose and can't quite get to it is Eli Ending. Patrick's hat to get rid of the football. Ricky Hall knifing through from his nose guard position. Well, decision for Tommy Tuberville here. I think he has to go for this. He's, he's lost a little momentum in this football game. Third down, tried to throw the football to Eli Ending, but uh, the pressure by Marshall. Now he gets put in a situation, fourth and two and a half, that he needs to get this first down. Well, it would be a 45-yard field goal that they were trying to attempt it here, but nothing doing for the Mississippi gambler, Tommy Tuberville. And Marshall wants a timeout. All right, with timeout on the field, we'll take it with them as Marshall will talk it over and see what they can do to possibly stop this fourth down conversion by Ole Miss. Back in a moment. Michigan invites you to jump in the lake. Look at players, they're starting to walk around here. There's some confusion. Number 28, Larry McLeod, he didn't like what he sees, so he made the timeout call. All right, Ole Miss, 12 of 16 on fourth down conversion, 75% on the year. Patrick's back to throw, has a receiver, and he is nailed at about the 23-yard line. Rome could not hang on. Thomas Maxwell, the defensive captain, he's the Rover senior from Decatur, Georgia, just leveled Andre Rome. You know, and Ole Miss looks flat to me. Uh, they scored that touchdown right off the bat, and offensively, they look flat. Andre, Andre Rome, that ball was right to him. Thomas Maxwell with a good hit. They got good protection right here. They keep both backs in. Now Flair the backside back, crossing route right there. He's going to run right through him. Thomas Maxwell caused him to cough up the football. All right, shotgun formation. Four wide receivers for Marshall. As they will go over the middle. Beautiful pass to LV, LaVorne Coltois. And he is up near midfield. Jason Clingy brings him down, but not until a 20-yard game. Well, there's no doubt, Jerry, right now in this first half that the better team is Marshall. They have looked the best of both these football teams. And on the last play, uh, Ole Miss did a good job on Randy Moss, but let L.B. Coklaw down the middle. And uh, Chad Pennington showing you why Bob Pruitt thinks he should be a Heisman candidate in the future. Marshall receivers running crisp routes. Nice tight spirals by Pennington as he's back to pass once again. Great throw, and he can't quite hang on. Mark Wicks, the senior from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Well, Think Penn made a good play on that, but on the other side of the ball, they're starting to be a little physical with Randy Moss. They're trying to keep him, Malika Griffin, they're trying to keep him on the line of scrimmage. There's the bump. They're trying to knock him off his route so that Chad Pennington will take and go away from him to the other receivers. Pennington, 9 for 12, 138 yards. Second and ten for the Thundering Herd. They give to the tailback, and he will get maybe a yard, yard and a half, stood up the line of scrimmage by Walker Jones. And the number 95, Morris Scott. The story of this first half has been the offensive line of Marshall. It's done a nice job against the defensive front of Ole Miss. They've handled the quickness of the defensive ends to this point. Chad Pennington's calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage against the defensive front that Ole Miss is showing him. But this Marshall offensive line has been up to the task so far. All right, third and eight. Randy Moss, bottom of your screen, three wide receivers top. Pennington looking right toward Coldclaw. And 
making the catch will be Nathan Poole, the sophomore out of Danville. Here's what I was talking about, Jerry. The offensive line for Marshall is doing a nice job. As they set up both tackles, they're wheeling the outside. They're making them, forcing them around the corner of Chad Pennington. And he's able to step up and make that throw. Nice tackle by Anthony McGee, the nickelback, the true freshman out of Collins, Mississippi, to save the first down by Nathan Poole. All right, Chris Hansen back to kick. End over ender, tumbling down. It'll hit at about the four-yard line and bound into the end zone. So Ole Miss will have it first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. All right, timeout on the field. 11 minutes and nine seconds remaining here in the first half. 17 points are scored. We've got a three-point football game. First quarter. Still 11 minutes to play here in the first half. High formation. Patrick's back to throw. Downfield. Pass overthrown and picked off at the 40-yard line by Larry Moore. Moore at the 35, 40, 45, 50. And cuts it back into Ole Miss territory at the 45-yard line. There's Ken Lucas Mack to make the tackle. Tried to get Ken Lucas down the field on a post pattern. Watch Larry Morrow. Perfect coverage gets turned around, though. But then the ball is thrown too far down the fifth football field. And here's where there's some good blocks. Thomas Maxwell, number nine. And then Larry Moore returns it to the 45-yard line. This team believes they can win, Jerry. Marshall football team's been in a lot of playoff games in Division I, double A, and it's helped them in this football game. Well, 10 and 2 on the year. Five in a row they've won since their loss at Miami on October 18th. They lead here by three points. They give the ball to Chapman. Big opening right side, cuts it back, and he will be inside the 30 and still on his feet. It will mark his forward progress down about the 30-yard line, gain of 14. What makes this play work is Chad Pennington's doing a good job of reading that box. He's reading that he gets a double here and he gets a block here. This linebacker and this linebacker have to make the play. They don't make it on Doug Chapman. All right, first and 10. Marshall driving once again. The fake reversing is still wide open. It is cold claw and he can't quite get to the football. Well, they had six there. Bottom of your screen, Moss. All alone, two wide receivers top, and Pennington decides to call a timeout. How'd you know? I just, come on, put it on, put it on. All right, all right. Honey. You need my size and everything. Hey, it looks good. Thank you. It looks feels good. Thanks. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, man. Cool. Back at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, Dave Ryan, Mike Godfrey, and yours truly, Jerry Punch, bringing you live action, the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. Low Turner to lone setback. Second and ten, and they will give the ball to Turner, and he will get a yard at most. Morris Scott beats him at the line of scrimmage. They had Randy Moss Marshall on the last play. They put him in a, a slot formation to now try to get him against the linebacker or a safety. Trying to find spots where they can get him off the line of scrimmage. Here he's against the linebacker, Walker Jones. Now safety comes up late, Timothy Strickland. Working him against safeties now. Let's see if they go to it. All right, third and nine. Marshall 0 for 4 on third down conversion. That was going to be very, very close. Right at, they had to get to the 20-yard line, and will depend on the mark. And they say, indeed, it's a first down. Gerald Long makes the reception as we check in on the sidelines with Dave Ryan. Hey, well, guys, Marshall certainly is no stranger to success. The Herd has won more games than any other college football program, 1A or 1AA, in the 90s, including Nebraska, Florida, Ohio State, Michigan, anyone. Marshall has won two 1A national titles in the last year in 1992, 1AA, and four times in the last 10 years, has finished second. Guys, this program knows very well what it's like to play big games under pressure. Indeed, is that pass intended for Moss in the end zone? Bob 
Bobby Pruitt becomes the first coach in the history of college football to lead his team to a perfect record in a national championship in his first year. Last year, they were 15-0. and 8-0 in the Southern Conference for a 1-AA national title. When I was talking to him before the game, he said, you know, I've only lost three games in the last four years, but he said, people forget, you know, I was I spent some years in some programs that were uh, down a little bit, so he said, I took my whippings along the way. So Bob Pruitt's done a, a very good job here at Marshall. Previously a defensive coordinator under Steve Spurrier at the University of Florida. Saw a few passing plays at that game, and another one, touchdown. Marshall L.V. LaVorne Coplaw, a junior from Glenard, Maryland, 19-yard reception, and adds six more for the Thundering Herd. Say, Jerry, Ole Miss went flat after that first score, and they haven't been able to get it back since. Chad Pennington, good play fake to Doug Chapman, comes out to the right side, you see the wide open LB Kopa. They are taking it to Ole Miss. And he had about four steps on the cornerback. As Billy Malashevich will kick the extra point up and good. And just that quickly, Marshall is up 17 to 7. With still nine minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. ESPN continues its bowl week coverage on Sunday at 8 when the 15th ranked Tigers of LSU and the Fighting Irish meet for the second time this season in the Poland Wheat Eater Independence Bowl. Tune in to ESPN Sunday for all the bowl week excitement. There's LV Lamorne Colclaw. 19 yard reception to put all put Marshall up by 10 over Ole Miss. You're going to see L LB on the route now, and you see the safety moving to try to help. Malika Griffin, number 34, gets on the hip and gets behind LB Colclaw for the touchdown. All right, Colclaw, five receptions, 49 yards, and a touchdown. As they kick the ball, finally to John Avery. He's dangerous, 30-yard line. And they just got a hand on him to trip him up at about the 33. The motivation in this football game, Marshall wants to prove that they can play with the Southeastern Conference. So their fans, they've had many travel here, believe they can play with them. There's the Marshall scoring drive. Six plays, 44 yards, a minute and 50 seconds. Colclaw, 19-yard touchdown reception. And meanwhile, on the Ole Miss sideline, there is Nate Wayne, the emotional leader, number 38 of that defense, trying to get the Rebels charged up to try to do something to hold this Marshall offense in check. There is a flag on the field now. It came in late. Well, Randy Moss is undoubtedly Marshall's most publicized player. Illegal substitution. Player going off the rod. Wrong sideline. Five-yard penalty. First down and five. All right. Player ran off on the Ole Miss sideline as you listen, as you look at Nate Wayne. That's exactly what he's saying, Jerry. We're being embarrassed right now. Randy Moss is undoubtedly Marshall's most publicized player, but as Chad Pennington told us, you cannot overlook the importance of L.V. LaVorne Colclaw. L.V. is probably the key to our offense. Uh, Randy is great for us, and he does a lot of good things, but if we didn't have LaVorne Colclaw, our offense wouldn't click as much because when they do take Randy from us, L.V. has made some big plays, and so he's very crucial to our success. Oh, indeed. And Here's a guy who's crucial to Ole Miss's success, John Avery. He scampers up over the 40. John Avery, they need to get him loose in the secondary. 55 yards on the first pass play. They've only had 77 yards in the last five possessions. They need to run the football with John Avery. Marshall's done a good job taking it away. 60 yards so far. All right, here's Avery's almost 100 a football game. I 
formation. Avery once again, and he will be brought down in the backfield. A great effort by guess who? B.J. Cohen, the captain and first team all Mid-American Conference defensive end. And he's had a outstanding first half. Six foot three, 240 pounds. Great quickness, 83 tackles. Sacks 14, leads the ball club, and he's able to get upfield, beat the tackle. Devon Colburn again to make the play in the backfield. Forced his third down play. All right, a loss of five yards on that play. Shotgun, Patrick's looking upfield. Try to find a receiver. Has Peterson, and he will be stood up. Or, correction, that's Sheldon Morris. The sophomore split in. And he will be about four yards shy of the first. And even the routes, Jerry, are off. I mean, they, they had nine yards to go, and they throw a five-yard route. Sheldon Morris came back. Nothing was open for Stuart Patrick. Plenty of time. He's got good protection, but uh, no receiver could shake loose. Looked like Patrick was looking downfield for someone who was past the first down marker, and all his receivers were so shallow, he had to hit someone inside, and that cost them a possession. They will kick it away. Now, the fake punt downfield, and there is no flag from the official. Boy, that's a gamble right there, and you know what you look for there? Because they figure that the Marshall players are running with their back to the receiver, and they're bumping the receiver all the way down the field. You're looking for pass interference, and they're not going to get it. Ole Miss, everybody steps inside. Now, all of a sudden, here's the back turn, so he doesn't know if it's a punt or not. That ball's thrown up there now. You're looking for pass interference on Sheldon Morris. Don't get it. Now your defense has to play. Oh, boy, now you're down by... What a gamble. Well, sometimes the gambles pay off, sometimes they don't. Six minutes, 46 seconds in the first half. Ole Miss down by 10. And that will give the Thundering Herd possession in Ole Miss territory. Jerry, when you make that gamble, you're telling your defense. Partners, we're getting about ready to get blown out of here. You need to, to, to make a stop on this play. Tommy Tuberville understands it's three particles that so you've got to have your special team, offense, and defense. His offense is going to sleep. So he's trying to jolt this football team by making that play. Now his defense needs to keep them in the ball game. Now you heard Nate Wayne trying to charge up that defense for Ole Miss. Pennington looking left toward Moss. The defender falls down, and so does Moss. Gary Thigpen, the junior right quarterback, stumbled and fell, and he may have tripped up Randy Moss, who fell about a yard or so later. That's exactly what happened, Jerry. Gary Thigpen fell down, and his foot came up in the air and tripped Randy Moss. Chad Pennington getting a little pressure there. Thigpen goes down, trips over, uh, and Moss trips over him. Big third down play for Ole Miss defense here. Big third down play. They are, after the missed opportunity on the fake punt, Ole Miss trying to hold on, down by 10. Third and eight for the Thundering Herd. Pressure from the inside. And Pennington had to get rid of it or else he was going down. But Ole Miss has all of a sudden changed their defensive strategy. Art Coffin, he sat back long enough and watched Chad Pennington pick him apart like a chicken. He's putting a lot of pressure on now. Here's the blitz coming right here. Spearman, number four, coming on the blitz. They're bringing uh, Walker Jones, number 29, getting to Chad Pennington so he can't find the receiver. That was big on that defensive stand by Ole Miss. Well, indeed, a defensive stop by Ole Miss. Sometimes you need to make a play like Tommy Tuberville did. He took a chance with the uh, fake punt. He may have woken this football team up. All right, the pooch kick by Hanson. It'll hit at about the, well, at the goal line and tumble in. He couldn't quite get it short enough to get his players downfield. And Ole Miss will take over on their own 20-yard line. Less than six minutes remaining here in the first half. Marshall up by 10. In Pontiac, Michigan, the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. Randy Moss, possibly his last game as a collegiate, trying to lead the MAC champion, thundering herd of Marshall in a victory over Ole Miss. First and 10 for Mississippi. Their own 
own 20-yard line. The inside handoff to Avery, and he is being chased out of bounds at about the 23. Looking at John Avery, we had Ole Miss against Arkansas in our, one of our Thursday night primetime games, Coach. And the Ole Miss offense that night was sputtering as well. They were deep in their own territory. John Avery looked to the sidelines and signaled the coaches he wanted them to call a play that he wanted to run. Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, said, well, my plays aren't working. Why not run what he wants to run? The result, 97 yards. Avery goes for a touchdown, and the Ole Miss offense was ignited. Second and six, by the scrimmage, a 24-yard line. Again, the inside handoff, and this time, nothing doing. He will lose a couple. Back to about the 21. And Jerry, in the old days, players used to make all the calls on the field. And Paul Brown, the great coach of Cleveland Brown, started uh, sending in guards with plays. And ever since then, uh, coaches have taken the play calling away from the quarterbacks. Uh, and make him from the press box above to the coach on the field to the, to the field. And sometimes players get a feel of what can work. But a lot of coaches feel like they're not going to put their future in the hands of a 21-year-old quarterback. All right, Grant Hurd, the sophomore, split in. Bottom of your screen, back in the ballgame after being injured early in the first quarter. Third and nine. The ball tipped from Stuart Petridge. And that will be up a fourth down situation. Ole Miss 0 for 6. Now make it 0 for 7 on third down conversions. Well, they're putting a lot of pressure on their defense, too. Three and out. And they're going to give their de uh, defense a bad field position again. But uh, two draws and the pressure on Stuart Patridge, the quarterback. Marshall defensively has been able to hang in there. Randall Green back to kick. A high end of spiral down at the 23-yard line. Randy Moss is thrown to the ground at about the 27-28. The Robert Reed, the H-back there, and a flag comes down. He may have, I believe he may have gotten a handful of face masks. Join ABC Sports New Year's Day at 1 o'clock when Coach Joe Paterno and the 12th ranked Nittany Lions battle the 8th ranked Gators of Florida in the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. That's Thursday, New Year's Day on ABC Sports. Well, that should be a good one there. Florida and Penn State. 15 yards from the end of the run. Well, they are going to call a flagrant face mask penalty, which is 15 yards. He stepped off against Ole Miss on that tackle on Randy Moss. And he had it all. Well, ordinarily, if you grab it and let go, it's a five-yard penalty. If you grab it and pull him down, that's the flagrant part. That's indeed what happened. 15 yards, it'll cost Ole Miss. Okay, Chapman, the reception, 50. Pretty good block outside to spring Chapman. Mitch Baker finally brings him down, but not until they gain 13 yards. Well, Mike Gilliam, the uh, offensive tackle on the left side, is going to get out in front of this quick screen to Doug Chapman. Block the tight end, blocks the linebacker. He takes the linebacker right here. Now 63, Mike Gilliam gets out in front. He's going to make a block on the corner. Number 30, Gary Thigpen. Good yardage for Doug Chapman. Had about 140 pound weight advantage over Thigpen. First down for Marshall, a thundering herd in Ole Miss territory. Under five minutes to play here in the first half. Ten point lead for Marshall. Again to Chapman. Down to the 40 and inside he falls forward to about the 39. I'm impressed with Chad Pennington because he's making the right decisions at the line of scrimmage. Again, he runs Doug Chapman inside to the left side, and they're able to take advantage of that John Wade, uh, Burt Scarborough double team, and there's the move right there. And he's able to get Chapman through for about a five-yard gain. Boy, Burt Scarborough walled off the inside. The linebacker who couldn't get there. Great opening for Chapman. Second and five for Marshall. Setback Chapman, Pennington lost one downfield toward LV, LaVorne Colclough. And he 
can't get there. To go back to what we were talking about earlier, the coaches have taken the, uh, out of the hands the play calling of the quarterback, but now they've given it back to them in some ways because they'll give them a runner pass. Chad Pennington goes to the line of scrimmage with a lot of time on the clock. Then he can make that call of what he wants to do, either run or pass. His offensive line, receivers and running back, wait for the call at the line of scrimmage. And as smart as Pennington is, Tim Luna has told us that Pennington will check at least 70% of the time the plays at the line of scrimmage. A lost one deep for Randy Moss. And Moss was so far behind Thickpin. Thickpin tried to tackle him but couldn't get him. Yeah, he had <laughs> He had him beat. They just couldn't get the football to him. Chad Pennington talking about how smart he is football-wise. He's a 3-7 great point average, but he's going to get Randy Moss way in front. Watch Gary Thigpen. Knows he's beat. He tries to reach out and grab Randy Moss, but he even couldn't make it. Had he been able to catch him and grab him right here when he dives for him, it would have been defensive interference, but he missed him. <laughs> drive kick to about the seven yard line Andre Roan and he will get maybe three up over the 10. Big here now 312 on the clock the Ole Miss has two timeouts left. See if Stuart Patrick gets him in a two minute uh, style of play. All right you're Tommy Tuberville the, uh, the running game isn't going you've tried to give the ball inside of your go-to guy John Avery a couple times he's been sort of stacked up behind the line of scrimmage what do you do? I think you have to throw the ball they're very good at throwing crossing routes that's, that's what's got them here they're able to throw the ball to Andre Rowe and of course we don't know whether Grant Hurd is totally uh, healthy in this ball game uh, but they need to get to all those wide receivers and John Avery out of the backfield three wide receivers and the slot back Stuart Patrick near his own end zone throws it upfield and Corey Peterson will make the catch up over the 20 yard line Jerry you practice this all the time we're late in the season it's December and uh, you should be able to minute wise know what you want to do uh, in this situation basketball being played in Puerto Rico. I have a nephew who coaches at Murray State. They Congratulations, by the way. Very proud of him. Knocked off Arkansas and Iowa State both. Uh, it's good for Murray State. Well, Arkansas has had a tough visit to Puerto Rico. They give the ball to Avery, and he will uh, have the first down up near the 25, but that will keep the clock. Uh, they will stop the clock momentarily to move the change for the first down. B.J. Sure. Cohen to make the stop. I've been impressed with this bowl game. Now, George Perlis done a great job. Ford's behind this game. Ross Roberts is one of the key executives. Uh, Ken Huffman. Uh, they have done a nice job here. Both teams have enjoyed themselves. It's a bowl up north. I think it's needed. Uh, teams went to Canada. They visited the Ford Museum. They've done a lot of nice things here. This bowl game is going to catch on and be big. Indeed. First year for the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. All right, they're going to reset the game clock. There is Tommy Tuberville, 33rd head coach at the University of Mississippi, was named head coach December 2nd, 1994. First Rebel coach since Ken Cooper in the mid 70s to have winning seasons in two of his first three years at Ole Miss. The left side, great block up front. He will cut it outside, accelerates, and be up near the 34, maybe close to another first down. He showed the acceleration, but you have to be impressed with the way the safeties from Marshall, Thomas Maxwell and Robert Beckett, are forcing up those lanes and making hits on the running game. They have to find, Ole Miss has to find a way to control those safeties. They, they tried to throw deep, a deep throw in the last series and got it picked off two series ago, but they have to hit a post behind these safeties. They've got to control them a little bit better. All right, second and short for Ole Miss. Make it a yard, line of scrimmage, their own 34-yard line. Two minutes, 48 to play in the first half. A thundering herd. Mid-American Conference champions up by 10 over the SEC. And that pass intended for Robert Reed incomplete. 
we check in back in the studio with Chris Fowler. Chris? Well, Jerry, thank you. Coming up at halftime, we'll preview tomorrow night's Insight.com Bowl, the neighborly feud, Arizona and New Mexico. Also, a report on the Rose Bowl. The number one team in the country, Michigan, has arrived out in California. And NBA highlights, including the Heat versus the Pistons. Lee Corso and Kirk Kerbstreet join me coming up at the break. All right, Chris Lee and Kirk at halftime, previewing some of the bowl games coming up. What a way to kick off our National Car Rental Bowl week with the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. John Avery looking for room to run. He will dance his way forward for about five. A lot of time, Jerry, again, 238. Every time you get the first down, you stop that clock, and they still have two timeouts. A lot of time, no huddle. First down. Grant Hurd goes to the sideline again. I don't know if he's 100%. He took a, as Dave Ryan said, took a hit on that opening play. That'll bring Sheldon Morris back in. He is the backup to Hurd. Morris, a former walk-on out of Jacksonville, Florida. Across the middle, complete for a gain of about six. That is Robert Reed and a penalty on the play. Has to be a face mask. It looks like on Thomas Maxwell, number nine. Well, he came right up and hit, and that's what I said earlier. They, they haven't been able to control the safeties. That's Thomas Maxwell making that hit on that play. Robert Reed, who made the reception, the former quarterback that transferred from Arkansas. Defense. Five yards, end of the run. Robert Reed might be the best athlete the on this Ole Miss team. In a first down. Played football at Arkansas, was on the Final Four basketball team, and... Uh, when you talk to the coaches at Ole Miss, they say he's by far the best athlete on the ball club. There's the tackle by Thomas Maxwell. All right, with the face mask penalty. Best offensive drive just early in the first quarter for the Rebels of Ole Miss. They are now in Marshall territory. Patrick looks short. Has Avery dancing around 45, but there are three... Thundering her defenders there to corral him at about the 44-yard line. And now apparently Ole Miss will indeed use a timeout to try to save some time on the clock. Jerry, what Marshall's done to Ole Miss in this ball game is since that first score, is they've been able to punt them into the uh, end zone, the 20-yard line, start at the 15, and they've made Ole Miss go the length of the field. And the one time that Ole Miss had a drive gone, they got a holding penalty and it took them out of the score. And this is the same type of drive. They started way back on the 10, and they, they figure, Marshall's figuring they're going to make a mistake somewhere along the line. Well, the initial catch by Grant Hurd, 54 yards to set up the Ole Miss touchdown, but then he limped off the field injured. Maybe we can get an update on Hurd's injury from Dave Ryan. Dave? Well, guys, to answer your question about Hurd a few moments ago, I talked with Tim Mullins, the head football trainer at Ole Miss. He is still being bothered by a deep right knee bruise. He's not able to get a lot of movement out there in the field. They are going with him in the lineup, but he's not close to 100%. You can see he's trying to explode in through his pass route off the line of scrimmage. He just doesn't have that speed he did on the initial play of the game to have that big gainer and good more Ole Miss in good field position for their touchdown early on. Boy, they certainly need him. His height at 6'3 and a half, 200 pounder at a Lake Jackson, Texas. Tommy Tuberville, uh, a lot of thinking going on about what, what will happen here and what could happen at halftime. Jerry, they got, I said it again, they've got to control the safeties. And one way you control the safeties is with your tight end. Rufus French, who's a great tight end. Jerry Donardo says he's the best tight end in the country, number nine. He has been silent in this first half. They need to find a way to get him the football. Motion by Reed, bottom of your screen. Second and five rush from Patrick. He gets Avery. He will cut outside, has some running room, and runs out of bounds at about the 35 yard line. Well, John Avery did a great job of setting up his block. This could have been tackled for no gain. John Avery is going to come out on the screen. Now he catches the football. Now Marshall player has a beat on him, but he's going to pull up and stop to get set the block up. Now he breaks outside. What a great move and a great block by Boyd Kitchen. Oh, indeed. And what about composure by Stuart Patrick as Larry Moore was about a step and a half away when he released the football. Patrick's back to throw once again, looking toward the end zone. And a collision down there. 
Is that Robert Reed? That was Rufus French, a tight end. Tried to go to Rufus French. A lot of contact both ways. Downfield on the receivers and the defensive backs are getting away with it uh, in this ball game tonight. But Rufus French was jammed on that play. Couldn't even release down the field. And he was 10 yards down when he was jammed. All right, second and 10. And I heard you, Coach, are trying to get Rufus French involved in the offense. And he has to be involved. All right, Packers has a receiver and almost gets it picked off. John Grace, the weak side linebacker, set right in front of the intended receiver and just couldn't quite hold on to the football. Well, now they did this. They moved Rufus French to the tight inside to give protection. They feel like they've, the quarterback, uh, Stuart Patrick, hasn't had enough time. So now they keep the tight end in. Throw to the three receiver side. It's almost interception. I'm a firm believer, and you have to make somebody pay when they drop an interception. Let's see if Stuart Patrick makes Marshall pay for that missed interception. All right, Patrick, 10 of 19, 123 yards, and one interception. As a receiver, left side, great catch at about the 24-yard line. That is Corey Peterson, the sophomore flanker from Germantown, Tennessee. And that's been there. Corey Peterson on the out route has been there for him on the outside. Real close to have the measurement here. Stuart Patrick's looking to his left, and he comes back to the out receiver. Corey Peterson on the out. Now, he should know where those sticks are. Let's see if he went, was able to go by them and make this first down. Of course, in college, you only have to get one foot down as opposed to usually the teams that play on this field. On Sunday, they have to get both feet in bounds in the NFL. And the Ole Miss first down, so the drive continues. A minute 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. Still one timeout by Ole Miss. They need to score badly to get back in this ball game. Their ball club has napped, offensively napped through this first half. You know, Ole Miss has struggled throughout the year in the second and third quarters. They have been outscored by their opponents in both the second and third quarters all year long. They have owned the first and fourth quarters. They've given up the middle part of the football game. And they need to get some points on the board here with less than a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Trying to get a little more protection. Lose Rufus. Wrench in tight. Looking left and has his intended receiver. That again is Corey Peterson. Right in front of Larry Moore. Nice curl route by Peterson. Picked up five yards. Rufus French brought him inside. And there's the block. That's the reason they brought the tight end in the block. Made the check. Knew the pressure was going to come from the outside. Second down and about five to go. Drive continuing for the Rebels of Ole Miss. Pressure from outside. The pass complete for the first down. That's Peterson. He will cut it back. Inside the five-yard line, Sheldon Morris, the sophomore, rather, making the catch after a gain of 16. That's what you don't want to happen if you're Bob Pruitt and Kevin Kelly, the defensive coordinator. You want to make the tackle your man coverage. You want to make the tackle right when he makes the catch, not allowing the extra eight, nine yards down the field. 36 seconds to go and one timeout for Ole Miss. And the clock is running. They will go with two tight ends. I formation. Eli ending in motion and flags all over the football field. Now that, that penalty's on Ole Miss. That takes the run option out of this situation. I think they were in with two backs to run the football. Brian's got a snap. Full start. Jerry, you're in a situation with 22 seconds to go where you got to throw the ball in the end zone. All right, Tommy Tuberville talking to Sheldon Morris, who made the reception. He will go ahead and take that final timeout and talk it over. Don't want to waste this opportunity here with just 22 seconds remaining in the first half. 
across such a key situation. Tommy Tuberville believes he needs to bring his offensive team over to explain to them now what they have to do because now by taking that time out, the run threat is gone. Marshall will substitute some extra defensive backs in the ball game. Line of scrimmage now back at the eight-yard line with that five-yard penalty for motion. So are they talk it over. We'll check in on the sidelines with Dave Bryant. Well, guys, this timeout comes at a very good time for the Marshall defense. They are exhausted right now. It's something to keep in mind. They were playing in very cool conditions practicing down there in Huntington before they came up here to Pontiac, Michigan. They're not used to being in very warm conditions. It's actually quite hot down here on the sidelines. The her defense needed that break just to catch their breath. Some of the guys were doubled over trying to just relax and try to rest a bit. They need that. That's a good point. And, and looking at their players now, you know, bending, when you start to see players bending over on the field, uh, that timeout, you're right, by Tommy Tuberville may have helped Marshall. Well, to steal a line from the song, the weather outside is frightful, but it is absolutely delightful here inside the uh, Silverdome. It's about 75-plus degrees. Yeah, I was looking for snow. Not in here. I mean, outside. <laughs> we're not, we're not we get, get snow in here. We've got yeah, a great story. We're not going to get any snow on this trip. <laughs> All right. Cold, but no snow. All right, 22 seconds to play here in the first half. Dave Ryan, Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch, the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. Impressive first half for the thundering herd of Marshall. There's a look at Ole Miss in the red zone, 73%. 23 touchdowns, five field goals. They turned it over three times. Eight-yard line. Three wide receivers. Patrick looking left, and great defensive play by Larry Moore, the left-side cornerback. Well, a lot of pushing by both. Grant Hurd, uh, the injured receiver early in the ballgame, and Larry Moore. Just a curl route at the goal line. That's the old play. Uh, Gene Stallings in Alabama used to run that a lot. Go to the sticks and curl. Now, uh, exactly where you need the first down. That was go to the end zone where you score a touchdown and curl. And the ball be thrown, but uh, good play by Larry Moore. That pass a half a second earlier. It's a touchdown. It's a half a second later. It's a touchdown the other way. Still think they got to get Rufus French involved against the linebacker. He's got some size. All right, second and goal. Patrick's wide open. will tuck and run. And he is down to about the two-yard line. But the clock is running, and they are out of timeouts. They're not going to get a play on here. Oh, a costly mistake by Stuart Patrick, the redshirt senior quarterback. And the time will run out in the first half. Oh, my. A missed opportunity by Ole Miss. 87-yard drive to end the first half. And the Rebels of Ole Miss come up without a point. All the leadership he had hoped for. One thing to watch in the second half, it looks like Tommy Tuberville is going to try to blitz Pennington, put more pressure on him a lot more. Oh, my. A missed opportunity by Ole Miss. 87-yard drive to end the first half. And the Rebels of Ole Miss come up without a point. Leadership he had hoped for. One thing to watch in the second half, it looks like Tommy Tuberville is going to try to blitz Pennington, put more pressure on him a lot more than we saw in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, I would think, Jerry, they'd have to blitz Pennington. They had success when they blitzed Chad Pennington late in the second quarter, but when they allowed him uh, the four-man rush and zone coverage, uh, he picked them very well uh, the first quarter and uh, early in the second quarter. All right, Steve Lindsay to kick it off in the second half. Maurice Hines and Nathan Poole are deep. A high end-over-end kick in the end zone, and Poole will kneel down there. The Thundering Herd will start at their own 20-yard line. We take a look at the first half statistics. Uh, somewhat deceiving in the fact that things were very, very close early in the football game, 7-7. Yeah, I mean, when big play offensive football teams, I think the biggest thing when you look at rushing yardage for Ole Miss, that's John Avery, 72 yards. They still need to get the ball in his hands, but also the tight end. Rufus French has not had a catch in this ball game, and he leads the Ole Miss team for the season in receptions. All right, we'll see if Marshall can begin the second half the way they began the first on the opening play. The toss screens and the receiver he's up over the 30 yard line that is Ger gerald long the slot back that's 
just a little quick screen to the outside. You expect your other receiver, Randy Moss, uh, is the other receiver. There's Gerald Long getting the pass, and then you expect your other receiver to block the corner. That's Randy Moss, 88, using his frame to block on Ole Miss's Timothy Strickland. Jerry, I, I'm a firm believer in this first five minutes for Ole Miss. They've got to make something happen. All right, second is short for the Thundering Herd. Pennington looking back and can't quite get there. Intended for Doug Chapman, the tailback. And he was covered very closely by Gary Thickpen. Penalty on Marshall. But uh, talked about the five minutes. Tommy Tuberville, I'm sure, at halftime challenged his football team. He said, you know, we, we beat Mississippi State. Uh, but we do not want to end the season with a loss in this bowl game. Sometimes you can be so happy with your last win, the 15-14 win over the Mississippi State and the, and the rivals that you fall asleep a little bit. But I think he's going to challenge his football team. And I'm anxious to see how they play this first five minutes. Well, they've had some huge wins this season. The big win in Baton Rouge over LSU. After a week after LSU had upset top-ranked Florida. 36-21 win over the Tigers. This is a goal from the spot of the foul. Penalty here because of the spot of the foul takes it all the way back to the 10 yard line. 15 or 10 yard line, right. All right, they come over and explain to Bobby Pruitt the spot foul will back up the Thundering Herd on their own 10 yard line. What was second and about three is now second and long. Pennington back to pass, plenty of time. Colt draw to 15. Strickland there will ride him down at about the 19-yard line. What you want to do when you have second and 20, you want to pick up half of it. But obviously, you like to pick it all up, but uh, you like to get at least where you're third and 10, third and 11, but they're going to be third and 13 here. But remember, this is a big play offensive football team. Randy Moss to date has had two catches. You hate to say anything just make a play when you just started the second half because you said it's, Ole it's Miss. Big because Ole Miss needs to stop them. They need to get their offense. They need to get a little fire in their belly. And they need to come out here and play a little tougher here in the second half. And this would be a field position stop for Ole Miss. They would get the ball in pretty good shape. Third and 12. Pennington looking upfield. It is nearly picked off right in the hands. CC second team, weak side linebacker. Well, Dave Ryan said that Tommy Tuberville said he's going to come out. He's tired of watching Chad Pennington pick him. So they're going to blitz him. And here comes the blitz of the linebacker, Nate Lean, 38. And he got to the quarterback, number 14. Brock Kreitz had the interception, dropped the football. Still a good series for Ole Miss. They need a return here. Need to, to get their offense going a little bit, Jerry. All right, Andre Rome. A senior halfback from Daytona Beach, Florida, Seabreeze High School. Averaging 7.8 yards of return. And Hanson will get it off. Pretty good kick by Hanson. Run will get it at the 39-yard line. 40, 45. Gets to the sidelines. He'll have running room. And he is down at about the 37. But there is a penalty. A 42-yard punt, 23-yard return by Rowan, but that may be negated by a penalty thrown about the 40-yard line. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes by Ole Miss. Going to have a block in the back, and that'll, that'll bring it back. Well, it's a spot foul, and if they, they correct it, uh, it's like at the 39-yard line. No, they're calling it on Marsha. G. Detelier, the referee out of the Big East, the officials in the Big East here, talking it over. On the return, we have an illegal block in the back against the kicker. Ten yards from the end of the run. First down. You don't hardly ever see that now. And that call, on, but uh, I guess the kick team blocking in the back. Well, the last time Ole Miss down here in the territory at the end of the first half, they came up empty. They had driven 86 oh, yards, and uh, they used their timeout. Tommy Tuberville wanted to use the timeout.
that set something up, but without any timeouts, Stuart Patrick decided to run the football, and uh, it ended on the two-yard line. All right, the backs, Eli ending in motion. They will give it to Avery near side, and he will be chased out of bounds enough before he gained about four and a half or five yards. Now you look for the adjustments, Jerry, but uh, they talked over at halftime. They had a long halftime here, 25 minutes. The contours, yeah, we're singing here, and uh, do you know what their, one of their best records were? They were the uh, Motown group in the 60s. That was a theme song from Dirty Dancing. Do you love me? Yeah, all right. Pretty good now. Ron Franklin knows all his music, so I know he's watching somewhere. He's pulling the uh, Ole Miss uh, likes this Marshall football team. He's talked about uh, Marshall all year. Uh, two great football teams. A perfect matchup to kick off the there should be a long history to this Ford Motor City Bowl here in the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Second and six. Ole Miss. Patrick's rolling left, being chased. Will toss the ball toward the fullback, Eli Ending. And uh, it is incomplete. Uh, we talked about the end of the first half. Stuart Patrick had driven the Ole Miss team 86 yards, trying to get some points. And as the clock runs down, he tucks and runs. They're out of timeouts. There are 12 seconds on the clock. The clock runs down. They cannot get in position to stop the clock and the half ends and Ole Miss comes up empty. Well, they, they have as big a play right now as they had just before halftime. They need to keep this drive moving. All right, still no score in the second half. Third and six. Ole Miss, University of Mississippi on the Marshall 25-yard line. Patrick looking upfield, has a receiver and he is right at the first down marker. The Ole Miss players signaling first down will wait for the officials to spot the ball. They had to get to the 19-yard line. The impressive part, that's finally Rufus French, his first catch, but the impressive part has been the secondary of Marshall. They punished uh, on this Ole Miss receiving court. Rufus French came into the game, Jerry, with 43 catches for 345 yards. He leads Ole Miss in uh, receptions, and that's the way you control linebackers and safeties. Run the line, they run the running back, uh, Deuce McAllister down the field, and hit Rufus French underneath. French, the third-team All-American tight end, finally getting on track. Patrick's looking downfield, and pass intended for Andre Rome. Thomas Maxwell, the rover there, in the protection. Boy, good again. Uh, when you look back on this tape, if Marshall holds on and wins this football game, Thomas Maxwell and Roger Beckett have made plays on John Avery in the running game, and they've made plays in the passing game. Opening possession of the second half for the University of Mississippi. After holding Marshall, they have the ball in Marshall territory on the 19-yard line. Second and 10. John Avery, and he will need it. If he cuts it back, he may have a crease. And he makes something out of nothing. Well, he did. That's his ability to cut with the football moving full speed. Cutting back against the flow of the linebackers. There was nothing outside here. So he's trying to skate outside. Now he stops right here. Now he works back, finds a little crease, picks up some valuable yardage, and makes it a third and five situation. But they've done a nice job. Marshall's defense. The coordinator, Kevin Kelly, has had a nice plan to try to slow John Avery down. John Avery told us last night he wanted to not spend so much time looking for an opening. He wanted to get through the opening and try to get in the secondary because of all the team speed Marshall had up front. Third and four. Patrick over the middle. Receiver wide open. Five yard line. Andre Rome. And there is a penalty back at about the 22 yard line. It's got to be a late hit because that's the only thing it possibly could be. And it, if it is, it's on John Grace, number four. Well, the referee began waving his hands and running toward the end zone. We'll see what the call is. We have a personal foul. Roughing the quarterback. Defense. Touchdown. Penalty well, review. Well, you talked about the first five minutes now. There's 11.46 on the clock. Ole Miss stopped him on defense. Bad snap to Stuart Patridge. 
Gives Andre Roan over the middle. Gets a block from Grant Hurd, number 88, gets in the end zone. Now John Grace, number four, is going to come on a blitz. Oh, yeah, clearly a late hit on Stuart Patridge. All right, the 13-yard reception. Patridge to Roan. And with the conversion, if Lindsay can kick it through, there's Patridge as he very gingerly came off the, the field a moment ago after that late hit. Seems to be none the worse for wear. As Tommy Tuberville, you heard Dave Ryan talk about the fact that he challenged his team at halftime. You have to. You've got to give him a wake-up call. And Tommy Tuberville looked like he gave him a wake-up call at halftime. Well, the kick is up. And good. So, with 11 minutes and 46 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, we have a three-point football game. Now from midfield, and that opens up the possibility, Coach. Onside kick, the pooch kick, or you can just let him kick it out of the end zone and start at the 20. But he gives you some options right here. All right, Steve Lindsay, 15-yard penalty, personal foul against Marshall on the conversion. He will kick it away. It goes halfway to Romulus. <laughs> Ernie Hardwell used to do that. He used to listen to the Detroit Tiger games. He's a one of the best of all time. And he used to say somebody's making a catch and they catch a foul ball. And he said he's from Romulus. And I used to think, what do you know he's from Romulus? <laughs> There's a look at Gerardi Mercer. He's the sophomore defensive tackle from Washington, D.C. And Bob Pruitt's going to tell him a little bit about that personal foul. The 15 yard penalty on holding there. And the discussion on the sidelines. Thundering herd, first and ten, their own 20-yard line. Three-point football game. Chapman gets it off right side, huge hole, and he will have enough for another first down. Gain of 11. Well, they're running the ball against this Ole Miss defense. Had success, but again, Doug Chapman's doing a nice job. The offensive line's doing a nice job, but Chad Pennington is making this call. Here again, he's got a little different blocking scheme here now. Blocked down and around by the guard. Number 52, Brian Reed. That's Jamie Rogers down in a little scheme. They changed at halftime and a uh, nice little adjustment against Ole Miss. Great block by Jamie Rogers, the junior college transfer from Merced, California. Right tackle. Once again, Chapman cuts inside, cuts outside. And we are seeing a display put on tonight of two of the best running backs in the country. Yeah, I think Doug Chapman now, a lot of people don't know much about him. He rushed for 115 yards and a touchdown in the uh, MAC championship game. He scored 10 touchdowns this year. He averages 5.8 yards per carries. And when he takes this handoff, he scoots to the outside here. Again, a good block by the guard. Jamie Rogers down inside. Now, there's a nice little move, and he picks up the block of Jamie Rogers, 78, the outside. Same thing John Avery does on the other side. Chapman averaging 7.6 yards a carry, 11 carries for 84 yards here just early in the third quarter. Low Turner in the spell, Chapman, and they will throw the ball this side, intended for Nathan Poole. Jerry, what that's going to do with uh, Chapman opening up the running game and Chad Pennington doing such a good job in there. Eventually, you're going to go back to 88 now, Randy Moss, because now if you can't hold up in the running game, then you got to move that linebacker a little closer to, to helping uh, stop in the run, which is going to mean those secondary guys are going to be all along, all along with Randy Moss. Third short here, and they got to pick up the first down first. down conversions one of eight Marshall all right low turn of the long setback Doug Chapman rather he will get the football and he is brought down dragged down behind the line of scrimmage on third and short he will lose about a yard and a half Mitch Baker knives through to make the stop put an asterisk beside that play right there because when you stop this Marshall offensive football team on a third and one yard Mitch Baker and give your offense another chance for this football. Mitch Baker just takes on the block and scoops to the right and makes that tackle on Doug Chapman. Baker the transfer from the University of Tennessee. Moved over from a defensive end to defensive tackle. There's Chris Hansen who will kick it away. Andre Rome. Boy, what a mortar shot. A high 
high spiral, and Rome will take it at his 22. Cut back to the 25, 27, and that's where Ole Miss will start. The Classic Sports Network rings in the new year with a marathon of great games, all of which end with spectacular celebrations. The party starts at 8 a.m. on New Year's Day. If you don't have Classic Sports, call your local cable operator or satellite provider. The Celebration Games. Offense trying to regroup a little bit. Uh, stung in their first two series. The coach is what he's doing. Jerry's asking the offensive linemen where they're lined up at and why they're having the problem they're having. The inside handoff to Avery, and he is corralled after about a yard. The Roddy Mercer may be trying to make up for that 15 yard penalty that he cost his football team. Very active to stay right with. Him. John Avery. Football games are won and lost with momentum and field position. Field position in the first half predominantly owned by Thunder and Herd of Marshall. Thus far in the second half, early on the first possession, good position for Ole Miss, and now Avery trying to find running room. And great pursuit on the left side for Marshall. He's done a nice job. The linebackers and safeties again. John Grace made that play. Number four. Ole Miss coach, uh, running back coach Eddie Grant said that John Grace concerns the staff of Ole Miss, the offensive staff, because he's so active on defense. Fast and very athletic off the corner. Why don't we check in quickly with Dave Ryan? Dave? Because Larry Moore, starting quarterback for Marshall, is injured right now. He says a moment ago he told me he's absolutely exhausted. He's getting some oxygen. It's very hot and he's tired at the moment. He needs a breather. He should be able to come back in though soon. All right. Thanks, say Third and six. And wide open is Peterson. And that should be enough for the first down right in front of the quarterback, B.J. Summers. Now, Dave Bryan mentioned in the first half on that long drive just before half that uh, the Marshall players defensively looked like that they were tired out a little bit and then come out in the third quarter and put the pressure right on them. And that's what you want to do as a coaching staff of Ole Miss. You want to turn up the heat on this defense a little bit by pressuring them all the time. Uh, now they're in good field position, can open it up a little bit more. Marshall having played in the MAC championship game in a driving snowstorm back on December 5th, now playing indoors. Downfield receiver Avery, and Avery had just broken clear of the defender. He was man to man with Larry McLeod, the linebacker, the outstanding middle linebacker for Marshall, 6'4, 232. And Stuart Patrick got uh, what he wanted, the running back on the linebacker, just couldn't make the throw. He just joined us 17 to 7 at the half in favor of the thundering herd of Marshall. Only scores thus far in the second half. A touchdown, a 13 yard pass to Andre Rome. For Ole Miss's only points. We have a three point football game. Patrick looks upfield, has a receiver wide open at the 45. That is Robert Reed. Redshirt Jr. from Brandon, Mississippi. And no rush. No rush at all by Marshall. They're going to have to blitz some linebackers. Watch this front right here. Look at this rush right here. Not much of a rush. Not much of an effort being stalemated. Giving Stuart Patrick time to find Robert Reed, the outstanding athlete. Todd Wade with a nice block there, number 71, to give Stuart Patrick some time. And that was over in the area of the backup cornerback. Now, Larry Moore is back in the football game. He's been out for a blow. Patrick's being chased. Will throw it upfield. And did he make the catch? One official, as they will confer, one official signaled. The other one signaled no catch. Flag down, too, on the other side. Referee will say no catch, and we'll hear exactly what possibly the penalty was. Sometimes when the officials take three weeks off, it's a little slow getting started. Also, when you get to a bowl game. Well, 
will cost him some yards. We can see there the, the faces of Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator here, and, and Tommy Tuberville, the concern they have with this Marshall defense. That's Grant Hurd standing to the right of Mazzoni. Is that receiver downfield against Ole Miss. Officials from the Big East Conference. R.G. Detellier. Ineligible receiver. Downfield offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. I don't know if that's not a bad trade for uh, Ole Miss right there. Five yards for a down back. Well, as an offensive coach, you'd give that up in a heartbeat. Yes. Especially with uh, number 20, John Avery back there. He picked five up quickly. This secondary seems to be for Marshall. You gotta wonder if they wouldn't test him deep. Got a shot, but I think you try to get the ball in John Avery's hands. All right, Patrick's back to pass. There is Avery. You called it the screen. Got a great block, and he is inside the 35-yard line. Maybe right at the first down. Something about a half a yard shot. Doc. When you got a horse, you got to ride him. <laughs> and they got a horse. They got Avery. You got to ride him. A little screen to the right side. The linemen invite him. Block back. They chop. And now here's the pass. Good blocks downfield. And you mentioned the tired athletes. Number four, John Grace fell down. And what you see happen sometimes is when you get tired. Look at this Marshall defense. There's a measurement right now. If we could show the Marshall defense now. They're down on their knees. We commented on the fact that they practice in Huntington, West Virginia. That's about six hours south of here, and the weather pretty chilly, unseasonably cool in December. As the measurement shows, they're about three inches shy. And you come here and you play in a dome. Yeah, go, and it's stuffy in here. Believe me. Put this tie on. It's stuffy. <laughs> but, Doc, you go back to that first down penalty. Five yards, so you got first and 15. You'll trade that any time. You come back with a John Avery move. Now you're second and short here. Now here's the time where you might go downtown and use this as four down territory. Try to challenge him deep now. If you feel like you got him wore out a little bit, Larry Moore's back on the field, number 11. It's a corner, but here's where you may try to go for the, uh, the six points. And the way those defensive linemen were kneeling during the measurement, you got to wonder how much rush they're going to be able to get on that. Second down to give once again to the horse. Up the middle, he cuts it back. And they just get him by the shoe. The shoe string stopped by Rogers Beck at the free safety. He saves a possible touchdown. You know, we've seen some good running backs this year. John Avery is certainly uh, one of the best. The best I've seen, though, I still go back to the diesel at LSU. Uh, the, that is as fine a running back as I've seen uh, in the last 10 years of uh, college football. And he got hurt against Vanderbilt, but he'll be back for LSU next year, the Diesel Collins. Cecil the Diesel. Hard to beat Cecil the Diesel. This guy's making a good run at it tonight, John Avery. Again, the Avery inside. He cuts it upfield. We talked at the top of the show about the comparison that people were making for John Avery. About the, the Barry Sanders kind of kind of running. And uh, they said he didn't quite have the strength to run inside. He wanted to improve his running between the tackles. He cuts it outside a little more. John Avery just went over 100, and, and you're right, Barry Sanders, he's accustomed to those same kind of performances here. But I think Ole Miss has uh, this Marshall defense reeling a little bit, and I think they can run the football at him right now. They're wore down. Avery, his 23rd carry of the night, and he will lose about a yard and a half. Good tackle there. Good tackle by Larry McLeod. You look for your big players to make big plays, and your middle linebacker, Larry McLeod, is just going to come in unblocked and makes that tackle on John Avery. McLeod leading the team with tackles this year. First team all, Mid-American Conference, one of the defensive tri-captains. Gary, you're talking about the Marshall secondary. they got new secondary guys in there. They've got Jeremy Eastwood in as a safety, and then they've got uh, Maurice Hines as in a corner. They need to rest their, their secondary guys. Let's see if Ole Miss can take advantage of that. All right, third and six. Wide open, Deuce McAllister, and he will score. 20 yards. Stuart Patrick for the true freshman, Deuce McAllister. And Ole Miss goes 
Deuce up by three. Well, Deuce McAllister, when you when you look at your backup uh, running back, Ole Miss beat Notre Dame on him in recruiting, and he's a, an outstanding inside runner. But Stuart Patridge made a good decision here to hit him on the flare and uh, down the sideline for the for the touchdown. And Ole Miss has responded since coming out at halftime. All right. The extra point is good by Steve Lindsay. And the true freshman from Morton, Mississippi, Deuce McAllister, senior class president, honor student, and beta club member at Morton High School, who puts the Ole Miss Rebels up by four after the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. It has been all Ole Miss. As the true freshman, Deuce McAllister, takes it in a 20-yard reception. Steve Lindsay set to kick it away. Maurice Hines and Nathan Poole deep for a thundering herd of Marshall. Low line drive kick will hit and bound at about the 15-yard line. Being chased back toward the end zone, Maurice Hines will finally kneel just before the defender gets there. On a touchdown play, Here's what you have. You've got three receivers to one side, the safety over the top. And on the back side, that's a linebacker, John Grace, and he's got the running back. But watch as he start to stop it, if you could, right now. He went the wrong way. He went with the action and busted the coverage, and Deuce McC McAllister down the sideline for the touchdown. having started all three possessions this quarter on their own 20-yard line. Once again, deep in their own territory, and we're probably going to get a motion penalty for the defense, and possibly even a hold offensively. Indeed, R.G. Detelier telling us he's going to call the offensive hold. Marshall has come out this second half, and penalties have just killed Defensive line owned Ole Miss's defense in the first half. In the second half, it's been a rejuvenated effort. Another Rebels. Holding. Offense. Ten yards from the line of scrimmage. Replay first down. Well, after the second play of the game in which Ole Miss scored the entire first half along to the thundering herd of Marshall. But the second half has belonged to Ole Miss. You got to get Moss involved in this thing now, Jerry. They've had four penalties, 48 yards, but uh, the game is slipping away a little bit. You got to get the ball to Moss. All right, Randy Moss, top of your screen. And they will hand it again to Chapman inside, and he will get nearly back to the line of scrimmage. Brock Watts, the weak side linebacker there to make the stop. When you get backed up, and uh, Chad Pennington uh, making that little call there, but uh, nothing's open. Brock Craig's a linebacker, but uh, and it makes it tougher as you go second and long to try to get the ball to number 88, Randy Moss. But two catches to this point. One was a touchdown right off the bat. One was a screen pass caught behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. So, uh, so far, Ole Miss has covered him with like a blanket, but they need to get him involved here. Again, they fake the inside handoff. They will have the pass. Oh, and he's right in the hands of LaVorne Coldblaw. And he makes that catch. He's got the first down and probably quite a bit more. Boy, both teams come out just the opposite. Uh, Ole Miss comes out with fire, and uh, all of a sudden Marshall comes out in the second half. They've got the lead. And they come out and just make mistake after mistake. LB Coldblaw wide open and just uh, just doesn't bring the ball in. And he's an outstanding receiver. Well, it is third and 19 yards. The line of scrimmage is the 11-yard line. They didn't start the 25-second clock, so that's the, uh, the hold up right here. Marshall has to get up to the 30-yard line to get a first down. Jerry, I'd just try to air it out with Moss. I mean, you've got third and 19-yard line, or third and 19 to go. How about 
they've, got, they've got him singled on the back side. They're going to hit the draw. They try to draw. He will maybe get two yards, and that's all. And that will set up a punting situation as Johnny Jones, a left end, will drag down Doug Chapman. Well, that's what you expected in the first half. The defensive ends, Johnny Jones, to have their way with the offensive tackles of Marshall. But it, it didn't happen in the first half. It's happened here early. Now Ole Miss needs to take advantage of this field position. Standing on his own end zone in line. Chris Hansen will try to kick away to Andre Rome, who's standing back at the Ole Miss 45. Huge momentum swing here in the second half. Ole Miss, two possessions, two touchdowns. A high kick to Rome. He will take it to 42. Comes left side, has a blocker if he can just cut the corner, but he will be chased out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. 44-yard punt, six-yard return by Andre Rohn. That's where Ole Miss will take over for their third possession of the second half. Back Michigan, Dave Ryan, Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch bringing in the inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. Ole Miss, two possessions in the second half. They have scored on both possessions. Great field position has been part of the story for the Rebels. They start this possession on their own 48-yard line. Atheridge takes the, the give and will throw the ball. That is Rufus French, the tight end. He will get maybe a couple. As we check in on the sidelines with Dave Ryan. Guys, this is a critical defensive stage for Marshall in this game. After that lost offensive drive for a touchdown by Ole Miss, offensive line coach Hugh Nall told his charges, guys, we've done it now. Now it's time to go for the jugular. We even see players coming off the field, guys, for Ole Miss, joking with each other. The Marshall players are tired. Now we take advantage. Now it's time to strike. Oh, indeed. You can feel the momentum swinging here. Early in the second half, Ole Miss up by four. Avery, they stretch it out. He tries to cut back, but nothing doing. Great pursuit. John Gray there to make the tackle. D.J. Cohen pursuing from the backside. You don't win as many games as Marshall's won in the 90s and go away quietly, oh, huh? There's still a lot of fight left in this ball club. Uh, they've won a lot of ball games. Jim Donnan, uh, who... Uh, Went on to Georgia, and uh, a lot of people say he took a pay cut going from Marshall to Georgia at the time to take that head job, built this program, and uh, sure, he's sitting home watching this ball game, proud of what he has built here, and Bob Pruitt's maintained it. Oh, indeed, he should be and proud of his job at the University of Georgia this year, too. A great finish for the Bulldogs. Third and nine. Ole Miss, four for four on third down conversions here in the second half. Patridge will make it five oh, oh, for five. What a catch by Rufus French. That was an option route. That was an option route by Rufus French. Now, what I mean by an option route, he's going to work down to the sticks and break off the defender. Rufus French at 10 yards. You're going to see him come out. Here he is, number nine. Now he's working right here against the linebacker. Breaks off, and that ball is thrown right on the money by Stuart Patrick. Big, big first down. And Rufus told me, said, my mom and dad, Joel, and Annie Ruth French are watching back in Amory, Mississippi. Couldn't get here to watch the ball game, so tell mom and dad I said Merry Christmas. I'll try to make it interesting for them. And he's been, well, they've made it interesting, but he's been more active here in the second half. Great reception. He's fighting his way to the 30 yard line. That's Sheldon Morris for a gain of 12 and another Ole Miss first down. You know, when you look at Stuart Patrick now, he's come out in the second half now and he's had a big time third quarter. But when the new staff arrived at Ole Miss, he quit the football team during the spring and he returned in the fall. Can you imagine if he wouldn't have come back because he led his team a drive in the two point play? versus Mississippi State. His dad was a former player for Mississippi State. What a big win for Ole Miss in the history of their football program. Oh, indeed. What a great effort Stuart Patrick has had as a redshirt senior trying to lead his team to a bowl victory. John Avery dancing around and again makes something out of nothing. We'll get two or three.
We told you what a huge momentum swing. The first half belonged to the thundering herd of Marshall. Up by 10 at the half, 17 to 7. Although the yards were fairly close. In the second half, it has been all Ole Miss. Well, it's been no moss. No, it's, no it's, moss. That's what it's been, no, no moss. And no Randy either. No, and he <laughs> has been ineffective here. What Marshall defensively needs now is some kind of stop, some kind of turnover, get a fumble or an interception and stop this drive and get Randy Moss back on the field. All right, Patrick's back to throw. Second and eight, has the receiver. And that will be another first down. Ken Lucas, he's the speedster, the true freshman from Cleveland, Mississippi. Well, that play just before the halftime may have woke Stuart Patridge up, too. You know, that might have been so much disgust on the part of the offense of not uh, failing uh, to go in there that they decided to come out the second half. And this is the type of offense I expected to see here. They're going to let this clock run down. And that will be the that will have been the last play in the third quarter as the clock ticks away. What a quarter. Two touchdown passes. Andre Roan across that one. Came back out of the shotgun. His line gave him good protection. Deuce McAllister down the sideline. And they're knocking on the door for more. And that man right there is Stuart Patrick. 10 of 14. 114 yards. Two touchdowns. And folks, that's in the third quarter. He got hot. University of Mississippi driving. First and ten. Deep in Marshall territory. Patrick's looking toward the end zone. And boy, he should have had that one picked off. Larry Moore had a shot at that one. Yeah, I'm going to comment on the fact. I think that it was the sixth game of the year when Tommy Tuberville turned this program around. They had gone to play at LSU. Ole Miss is three and two. They just lost at Tennessee. They are trailing at halftime, and Tommy Tuberville told his players, we are not going to punt in the second half. We're going to come out and do whatever it takes to win the football game. They were four for four on fourth down conversions in the second half and beat LSU and went on to be able to qualify for a bowl bid. As that pass given to Avery, and now flags, whistles, you name it. And now it's holding on Sheldon Morris, number 86, and Bob Pruitt was down the sideline, and he was going to make sure they threw that flag. Boy, Pruitt almost made the tackle. Yeah, he ran faster than uh, John Avery did on that play. And that's the mistake you're looking for if you're Marshall. You want to stop this drive. Take Holding. it all the way back. Offense. Ten yards, spot the foul. Play second down. Now, Jerry, that's not a good trade. And all the way back to the 27 for a down. Now they've got to get inside the six-yard line to get a first down. Talking about Ole Miss second and a height. Make it. Maybe time for a draw here to John Avery. Some type of John Avery play. Shotgun formation early in the fourth quarter. Patrick's pump fakes, looking deep, throws it up, and out of bounds, intended for Sheldon Morris, and we have a flag in the backfield. Devon Colburn's going to be called for holding. You're going to back this one up about uh, a few more. You pace those from here. Now well, it'll be uh, third on the wrong way. Third in a day's ride. This, uh, this penalty is stepped off. yard line to get a first down. This is big right here because this game is still one Randy Moss pass away. Yeah, Marshall by no means anywhere close to being out of this football game, but there's their quick strike capabilities. Cole Claw, Moss, Pennington, and this guy right here, Tommy Tuberville, he knows it. 
not liking what he's seeing here early in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss owned the third quarter. And Pruitt now, Bob Pruitt, the head coach of Marshall, saying, well, we got to hold him here and get this defense off the football field. Yeah, second and 40. This is not a good situation to be in for Ole Miss. Just got to hang it up. And that class complete. That is... That is French, Rufus French. 11-yard gain. That'll get back part of it. Now you got to try to get in field goal range here, Jerry, because you're so far away. Third and 29. Rufus French has been active here in the second half. Didn't have a catch in the first half. Leads Ole Miss coming in with uh, receptions. Joe Penunzio is his coach. He had Chris Mangum last year, who's now in the Carolina Panthers. They've had good tight ends at Ole Miss. Well, talking about, there's a look at Rufus's numbers for the night. Very, very soft hands. It's face of Kellen Winslow caught a tight end. No Ole only the offensive coordinator. Not many plays he grew up in the third and 29. Patrick gets a little pressure. Flush out of the pocket, looking downfield, has a receiver, and Grant Hurd goes up and can't hold on. The pressure really stopped that play, but John Avery was running free down the middle of the football field, but Stuart Patrick never could get set to throw him the football. That was big there for Marshall, those two holding calls. Big. All right, Steve Lindsay has kicked one from 52 yards, but they will not try. They will they will punt the ball. Kevin Cooper, who is the hang middle kicker. B.J. Summers, standing on his own seven-yard line to receive. There's a look at Kevin Cooper. That's exactly what you want right there. That's the kick you want. Very high, and Ole Miss trying to get him inside the five, and they will do it at the one. They say it was in the end zone. The one official started to put the ball down at the one-yard line. The other one says, no, it is a touchback. And we'll come out to the 20. Well, that's big there, too. All right, incredible effort by Ole Miss to possibly try to get that ball down deep in Marshall territory. But the Thundering Herd will get it first and 10 on their 20-yard line. This was a large, medium, and small pizza. Now, Little Caesars. It's two seconds to play in the football game. Marshall's fourth consecutive possession starting at their own 20-yard line. Now, Pennington looking downfield. Overthrows Randy Moss up about the 30. You got to try to go to him, oh, Jerry. Then in third quarter, Marshall only had the ball 10 plays, 39 yards. So Ole Miss dominated that quarter. But you still have to go to Moss, Randy Moss. Now, the difference in the second half is Ole Miss Arch Kaufman, the uh, defensive coordinator, has put the pressure on Chad Pennington. Has not allowed him time back in the pocket. And Doug Chapman, who ran the ball pretty effectively in the first half for Marshall, has been uh, silent. Basically shut out here in the second half. Pennington changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock, and he just does get the play off. He gets pressured by Price. Great pass upfield. And John White, who began the year as a starter at tight end, makes the reception for the first down after a gain of 13. Yeah, good throw under pressure by Chad Pennington. Again, Brock Price trying to pressure him. John White uses 6'6 frame. Misdirection play. Fake to Doug Chapman coming out to the backside. Good arm strength on that ball because he had no follow through Chad Pennington. Now, Marsha trailing by four, 21-17. Trying to get their offense on track here in the fourth quarter. Pennington gets pressure, and they were trying to go inside with a flanker screen to Randy Moss, and Ole Miss had about three or four defenders right there. Well, they read that all the way. Armiga Spearman, number four, was right on top of Moss, and he was just running right with him on the screen. An Ole Miss player down on the field. As you see some of the training staff trying to rub some of the calves that are, I'm sure, are cramping from some of the Marshall players. As bad as Marshall's played the third quarter here, they're one play away from getting this lead back. 
All right, why well, Tim Mullins, the uh, head trainer for the University of Mississippi, checks out the player down. We will take a break and come back with more from the Silverdome in Pontiac. And from three safety, there's Griffin standing on the sidelines, and Strickland will play. They're going after him, too. And it's a jumping contest, and Moss jumped a little bit early, and the ball lands right in Timothy Strickland's hands. Well, that was a good play by Timothy Strickland, his free safety, and now Malika Griffin will come back into the ball game, but they were trying to go, and that Timothy Strickland was going to give him the little out route, but does a good job of staying back on a deep throw. It was underthrown by Chad Pennington. Griffin's back in the ball game. Well, that classic Randy Moss move of staying behind the defender and then turning in front, leaping to catch the ball and come down and just take off on a gallop. Pennington, three of nine for 29 yards this half. Avoids one potential tackler and has the receiver. That's LV. Lavorin Coldlaw, and depending upon the spot, he should be very close to the first down. He's got the first down, Jerry, and uh, good play by Chad Pennington. Three-man rush by Ole Miss. Gave him some time to throw. There's Morris Scott, number 95. Scott had almost gotten to Pennington. He ducked under him and was able to get the ball away. Offensive showing of the second half of the thundering herd of Marshall and Pennington quickly gets rid of it. Brock Kreitz right in his face when he turned around. Kreitz coming from the backside from his weak side linebackers. That's twice they've run the naked to, to Brock Kreitz, which means there's nobody out there blocking Brock, Brock Kreitz. They're trying to give a fake to the right side and figure that the defensive end on the other side will not come after the quarterback. But you see Brock Kreitz both times he's been able to defend that play. And it's tough for the quarterback going to his left to wheel around with his head and his body and throw that ball quickly. All right, three wide receivers, bottom of your screen, oh, one of them is Moss, and they're going for him. And he will have, make the catch, and the flag comes down. Well, I don't know about that. Malika Griffin single covered it now. From the play start, Malika Griffin was beat. 28-yard game. Defensive pass interference. Penalty refused. Results in a play. First down. Jerry, you could see it coming. As bad as they played in the third quarter, and Ole Miss had a chance to go for the juggler and didn't do it. And now Marshall's got new life. Malika Griffin beaten here by... Randy Moss, a little pushing going on, and there's the catch. Marshall in business. Randy Moss having come off to catch his breath. Now you try to run Chapman a little bit, uh, Jerry, because the passing needs opened up. Deepest penetration of the second half by Marshall, and overthrows the intended receiver, Nathan Poole. And Harry Thickman, the cornerback, right with Poole step for step. player the ability of Randy Moss he signed by Notre Dame out of high school and then uh, they dropped him and Florida State picked him up and uh, Bobby Bowden he had a problem and uh, ended up going to Marshall and uh, probably is playing his last college football game tonight there's the numbers on, on Moss three receptions 105 yards including that very first play from scrimmage for Marshall, an 80-yard touchdown grab. Second and 10, the thundering herd. This time they will give the ball to Chapman. Pretty good hole right side. He spins out of a tackle and is caught from behind by Brock Price. Well, you knew it was just time because the way they're throwing the football now, Ole Miss is trying to defend the secondary a little bit. Doug Chapman, who has had a quiet second half, gets his handoff and get some nice blocks. Look at the hole, but now here's the missed tackle in the secondary. A little spin move, and you can't have those missed tackles. That's Anthony McGee. Chapman, 15 carries for 100 yards. And the thundering herd now threatening for the first time in the second half. Chapman again, and runs into the back of his offensive lineman. That's John Wade, the center. 
he's a good center too. John Wade, Brian Reed, Burt Scarborough. The offensive line now is uh, has taken over the line of scrimmage again. Good block. They caught him on a little angle to the left side. John Wade down the field. Mike Gillum, a nice block. Now you think Randy Moss in the fade, but if you don't want to run the ball with Chapman, you got the fade possibilities. All right, Moss, top of your screen. Well, watch for Pennington. They, they throw the screen inside to Chapman, and he will walk into the end zone. Beautiful play. Everybody and their brother went with Randy Moss. They were all thinking what you were thinking. Yeah. Moss in the fade. They were thinking Randy Moss. from six yards out puts the thundering herd back on top. and 12 seconds remaining here in the football game. A thundering herd back on top by three. Anytime the police give you a traffic ticket, you have two important... John Avery. That one left the field about the 45-yard line. Gates Brown used to hit him that way in Detroit. Him and Al Kaline and Bill Freehand and Mickey Stanley and Jim North at that 68. Tiger baseball team. That's before my time, Coach. Yeah, they were great for the team. <laughs> Danny McLean, Mickey Lolich. Oh, indeed. Well, this guy right here's got a lot going through his mind right now, knowing that uh, he would like to somehow turn this momentum back around in these final 10 minutes and get some points. I'm going to take and make them kick over again. I think uh, illegal. So let's see if they kick it out of bounds again. You know, when you watch the two receivers for Ole Miss, they try to switch at the end. And uh, if you kick that ball down to numbers, they may not be able to get to it because they're caught in the middle of the field. Let's we'll see if they try to switch again. That, of course, is Ken Lucas and John Avery. Lucas, 24. Avery is 20. Lucas is the speedster, the true freshman out of Cleveland, Mississippi. And Avery, of course... The Ole Miss record with three kickoff returns for touchdowns. A low line drive kick will go out of bounds again. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to make sure you don't handle the kickoff return. It's on uh, Marshall. Marshall running back Javon Darling over there to help chase him out of bounds. Marshall got a break somewhat by being able did. to chase him out inside the 30-yard line. After the play with Rule Dead, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the kicker. make somebody pay. All right, Monday at 3.30 on ESPN2, Big West Conference champ Utah State matches up with the Bearcats of Cincinnati in the first ever Humanitarian Bowl, live from Boise, Idaho. That's Monday at 3.30 on ESPN2, your home for college football. Well, that man out there cannot be very happy with that situation there. They are just giving yards away here in the fourth quarter. Avery cuts it back, dances up across the 45. You know, 
Jerry, Matt Luke tonight. The center, number 50. He's had a knee injury for Ole Miss. Didn't practice the last two weeks, and everybody talked about that he must stay on the field tonight. Uh, you talked to the trainer. He talked about uh, close to being an operation, but uh, Matt Luke has given a great effort tonight to center position. Well, incredible courage. They said he's small of body, but big of heart. Strained ligaments in his right knee. Came back and played the second half of this Mississippi State. This time, Booster Callister tries to break free. And he will have enough for the first down. As we check in down on the sidelines with Dave Ryan. Dave, well, Jerry and Mike, each program for this bowl game took a very different approach in terms of their game preparation. Down at Ole Miss for four days last week, they ran two-a-day practices with full pads and full hitting. Plus three hour and a half practices once they got to Michigan. Marshall, a much more uh, traditional approach for their bowl game preparations. Just one practice a day, not as much hitting. We'll see if that conditioning will take effect here from Ole Miss late in the fourth quarter. You know, Dave, Tommy Tuberville talked about the fact that it's almost like another spring practice. They worked a lot on conditioning in their first practice in the two days. They worked on game plan in their second practice. And McAllister, the true freshman, refusing to go down. He's a better inside runner, really, than John Avery is. John Avery likes to scoot to the outside, but Duke, Deuce McAllister, 6'1", 190. The freshman who I said earlier, Notre Dame, uh, had a high on their recruiting list, and Ole Miss took him away from him. You know, Coach, I'm watching Matt Luke, the center we are talking about a minute ago, and he is barely able to get up after each play and get back to the huddle. A lot of courage for that young man, the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Oh, there's no doubt, that, Jerry, they, they need Matt Luke in this football game. SEC academic honor roll for Matt Luke. He's a legacy kid. His father, Tommy, a defensive back at Ole Miss from 1964 to 66. His brother, Tom, was a quarterback there from 89 to 91. It's an interesting strategy move by Noel Mazzoni and Tommy Tuberville and uh, Andy Grant, the running back coach now, to bring in Deuce McAllister late in the ball game like this and take John Avery out. Deuce McAllister obviously looks like he's got fresh legs running the football. McAllister, a super prep All-American, ranked 17th in the nation last year as a defensive back. Coming out of Morton High School in Mississippi. McAllister, two carries for 19 yards in this possession. And he will get it again. Cuts it back and has some running room and no. Again, wide break three. Be up down inside the 30-yard line. B.J. Cohen there to finally wrestle him down. Well, this is good because this gives John Avery a chance to rest on the, on the sidelines a little bit to, to be able to come back in a rested running back. There's John Avery. This located his left elbow on the third play of the season against the University of Central Florida. Missed the next three football games. Came back against Vanderbilt with an impressive performance. And a rib injury against Tulane down in the uh, Superdome in New Orleans. McAllister, a huge hole right side. He cuts to the outside all the way down to the 20-yard line. Well, you got a hot hand. You just keep running Deuce McAllister beside, behind Todd Wade, Wade, Rufus French, and Boyd Kitchen on the right side. Got a nice double right in here. And the linebacker, number 28, McLeod, got caught up in the uh, double team. John Avery, uh, very happy for the freshman running back to do well. Very unselfish football player. Nice young man. John Avery. As McAllister back on the sidelines and Avery back in the football game. Good strategy. First and 10, 20 yard line. Avery, arrested Avery, cuts it back and not much running room. See, there's the difference in the two running backs though. McAllister's going to hit it inside a little bit quicker than John Avery. John Avery's going to stutter step and try to look for outside plays first. Still a dangerous back. And, and Jerry, I thought what you said early in this program when he got a chance to talk to Barry Sanders, what he said to him, you know, that you're a great role model for me. And I just think that's so much when we need role models. Uh, Barry Sanders is an outstanding one. You know, Avery said that he told Barry Sanders it's not what you do on the field, but what you do off, the way you carry yourself for football that I wanted to model myself after. Second and nine. For, and lots of pressure. 
Patrick got it away, but John Grace just leveled it from his weak side linebacker position. He talked about the coaching staff of Ole Miss, was concerned about John Grace's blitzing ability. Just got uh, Stuart Patrick as he was throwing that football. third down and nine that, uh, that I remember Ole Miss having. They decided to go to Rufus French on an option route. All right, five minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the football game. Marshall up by three. And Ole Miss with a third and nine from the 20-yard line. Patrick's looking toward the end zone. And has the receiver. Touchdown. Grant Hurd makes the catch. A 19-yard reception. There wasn't much room to fit that in, Jerry, and he fit it in. Gets B.J. Summers. Oh, what a great pass by Stuart Patrick. Grant Hurd had to catch at the beginning of the ball game and this catch. Go back to those kickoffs now and the penalty. Well, Lindsay up with the extra point is no good. And the margin will stay at three. Well, it's starting to heat up here as we wind down in the fourth quarter. It's a seesaw football game. Ole Miss going back on top. He did a great job, and he's only a freshman, 6'3", 302 pounds. And there's the catch by Grant Hurd. But that guard, the freshman guard, Terrence Metcalf, made a good pickup on the linebacker to give Stuart Patridge the time he needed to throw that touchdown pass. Patridge's third touchdown pass of the second half. Lindsay kicks it away. High end over ender. Will be kneeled down in the end zone by Nathan Poole. Well, to recap the scoring here in the fourth quarter, Doug Chapman, a six-yard touchdown reception. Put Marshall up 24-21, and with 5:39, at 19-yard reception by Grant Hurd to put Ole Miss back up 27-24. And don't forget, Sports Center coming up next at the conclusion of what is building to be quite a shootout here in this final five minutes and 32 seconds. And the short toss over the middle to L.V. Lamorne Holtzlaw. Jerry, you go back to the field position that Ole Miss was given by Marshall because the two kicks out of bounds and then the personal foul. So they're starting around the 45, 48-yard line. So that puts your defense in a big bind. And the missed extra point a moment ago yeah, put lets some things open here. Well, it puts Marshall within a field goal of uh, tying it up, and we could be talking overtime. The give this time, no, the fake to Chapman, wide open downfield, and Ma, boy, got to believe that Ma may have, may have looked up and saw Timothy Strickland. Well, I'll tell you what, he knows he made a big mistake because I think he took his eyes off the football and uh, he heard Timothy Strickland, number three, coming. First of all, he's had a tough time tonight getting off the line of scrimmage, Malika Griffin with the contact now watch he takes his eye off the football drops the ball on a big third down play here oh he did indeed look over and see strickland coming and uh, knew that he was going to get belted if he caught the football third and two the thundering herd of marshall single setback pennington changing the play at the line of scrimmage two wide receivers he will give it the tailback who just cut through an open 40 45 and a great by Doug Chapman to keep the drive alive. 19-yard game. Big play by Doug Chapman. Just continuing to keep his feet moving. He's tired. Going to come out of the ball game here. To replaced by Lowell Turner, his backup, who's had a big year. Well, we're going to have a fantastic finish here, Doc. 4.43 on the clock. Good cutting ability. Flat cut there. Ran by Strickland. Well, well Gary Thigpen... If he doesn't corral him, then uh, he's going to score. Chapman, 17 carries, 127 yards tonight. And 
Chad Pennington looks up and realizes he's going to probably lose the on top. Fourth quarter, Marshall driving. And talk about offense, we have had 844 yards of total offense in these two football teams thus far tonight. And to further talk about the numbers, how about the attendance tonight? Announced attendance, 43,340 fans. What a great way to begin a bowl game. Motion by Colclough. It will give the ball to Low Turner. And he will push the pile. As we have a penalty. Flag on the play. R.G. Detelier from the Big East Conference. Talking about the attendance tonight, George Burles has done a marvelous job here. UAW here uh, in Detroit spent $35,000, bought 10,000 tickets for the kids of Detroit and Pontiac, bust them here, gave them sandwiches. So hats off to Steve Jokic, the union leader, and Ernie Lofton. A lot of fans coming a long way. Those folks from Marshall, six hours from Huntington, West Virginia. The folks from Oxford, Mississippi coming up. In charter after charter, landing last night here in Detroit. First and ten, Chapman back into the low setback. He will get the football. Huge hole, right side, cuts it outside, back inside, and is finally chased down from behind. Malika Griffin is there, and so is Morris Scott. And Scott has not gotten up. He is having trouble getting up off the playing field. Boy, good blocking on the right side of the line. See him come off. They get the block down by the tackle, and the guard pulls around. That's Jamie Rogers down, Brian Reed around. The tight end, Jared Keeley, blocking at number 84. They got it sealed off pretty well. Now you're in the secondary. You get a good block for your wide receiver, Jared Long, and uh, you're in business. All right, Scott had a shoulder problem coming into this football game. We went off holding that right shoulder, so we'll probably get an update on him. Chapman, 18 carries, 144 yards. Pennington to Moss inside the 10 yard line. Gain of 14. It'll be first and goal for the thundering hurt. With that big frame he has, 6'5, 210, he can yield off the Gary Thigpen who's 5'9, 165. He just does a nice job positioning his body. Short post, he takes up the field. Now he just shields off the little defensive back with his body. Gary Thigpen on the tackle. Marshall trying to put this one away. Moss, four receptions for 119 yards. Tonight, they want this yeah. level to be his final college football game. Got to be thinking paid again. And Pennington is leveled from behind. Great rush by Andre Harrison, who leads the team in sacks, coming into the night, the two-year starter out of Washington, D.C. And Jerry, down here, because the two receivers, L.B., is six foot three. Randy Moss is six five. So you've got the possibility of the fade against Gary Thigpen, five nine. Malika Griffin, five eight. Second and goal. Line of scrimmage. The Ole Miss nine yard line. Marshall trailing by three points. Three minutes, nine seconds to play. Wide. They've got their wide receivers against the corners. One on one. To the end zone, and he can't hold on. Big Ben right in front of Randy Moss. Tried to go to the fade to Randy Moss, and under threw it a little bit under pressure. Chad Pennington trying to pick his big tall receiver on the fade. Good job by Gary Big Ben getting his hands on him. Just didn't give him any room to make that catch. Big Ben had a right arm in between two of Moss's hands and was able to strip the ball free before Moss could pull it in in the end zone. Third and goal. Nine-yard line. Shotgun formation, Pennington. And he will give it inside. Two-yard line, one-yard line, touchdown, Marshall. 
Doug Chapman from nine yards out puts the thundering herd back on top. With the four wide receivers, Jerry. players is injured and this just gone time out that's Gerardi Mercer who was down and now we'll get up and trot off the field and I was going to charge Ole Miss with a timeout I was trying to read Tommy Tuberville lift he was saying who called timeout Francis, 6'4", 245. Patrick trying to escape. Throws it in the direction of Corey Peterson. Well, that was number five again. B.J. Cohen with the pressure. He has been in the backfield all evening. Second and ten. Two minutes to play. Patrick's numbers for the night. 315 yards, three touchdowns, all three coming in the second half. And one interception. Second 
second and ten. Pretty good protection for Patrick looking downfield. Has a receiver. And he is about a yard shy. That is Peterson, the flanker. John Gray is there to keep Peterson from turning to reach for the first down. That'll bring up a third and short. Peterson wide open on the curl. They had a curl flat, Rob Rufus French in the flat. Now, no question there in four down territory. Clock running down. No doubt in Tommy, Tommy Coverville's mind. They hand the ball off to McAllister. He cuts it through an opening, 30, 25, 20, and finally brought down at about the 18-yard line by B.J. Summers, who saved the touchdown. Well, McAllister has ignited this offense in the second half in the fourth quarter. He's come in with fresh legs. He's run hard inside, and he's been able to break off some big plays. He's going to go out of the ball game now uh, in favor of John Avery, who's probably a better pass receiver out of the backfield. For six carries, 62 yards. That 24 yard run. And now Patrick has a receiver inside the 10. And he did not get out of bounds. And the clock will run less than a minute to play. That is Grant Hurd. Well, that extra point by Ole Miss that was missed on their previous touchdown has provided a four-point margin for Marshall. So a field goal is not, not, not going to help them much. Not an option, Jerry. They use a timeout here. They still have one timeout left. You almost wonder you don't want to score too quickly. <laughs> Andy Moss on the field. What a football game. Been a great game. I want to pass along to George Perlis's mother. Is going to be 90 years old. Nelly, she's watching the ball game tonight on January 5th. 90 years old. So again, a, a great evening for George and uh, his committee uh, and the fans that came out here tonight. This bowl game is going to going to be a good bowl game for teams uh, across the country. Oh, indeed. What a way to kick off our national car rental bowl week coverage with this inaugural Ford Motor City Bowl. Two evenly matched football teams from the MAC and the SEC. A seesaw battle here in the second half. Four points separate these two football teams with less than a minute to play. And Ole Miss, very reminiscent of what happened in their final game of the year in Starkville, Mississippi. Jerry, they've got Deuce McAllister in there. He's a better inside runner. Let's see if they go to him. First and goal to nine yard line. McAllister to the two yard line. And that's the first down, so that'll stop the clock. See, he, he had run so hard inside. Uh, he, he's got good leg drive. He's got good body lean. He's just a tough, tough inside runner. And you, you take out of John Avery, I mean, you've got to have a lot of confidence in your young freshman back. The Ole Miss fans that say McAllister reminds them of two innocent. The former Rebel running back and has such a bruising style inside. And he leaps in and touchdown. Touchdown for Ole Miss on that leap by the true freshman, Drew McAllister. He's been the difference. Uh, his style of running has helped the Rebels tonight. Good blocking again. I can't say enough about Matt Luke at center. He's played solely uh, on guts. Well, Tommy Tuberville going to go for two, but they got about 28 players on the field. You know, they, they're going to go for one now. I think you got to go for one here. They were holding up two fingers initially. And now they got yeah, you got to go for one. All exactly. you did was row it. They got the offense off and the kicking team back on. The kick is up. Lindsay. It is good. And there is a penalty on the play. So not so fast. Not so fast, Jonesy. What a football game. Big East officiating crew here at the Silver Dome tonight, talking it over. You have to go for one here. Oh, the substitution there. We have yeah. no flag on the play. The point is good. Now Marshall has to get a kickoff return. They still have two timeouts left. Touchdown by Deuce McAllister being able to stretch the ball out over the line. 
gets good hurdle and gets that ball way over the line for the touchdown. All right, here's a reaction from the Ole Miss bench. They know it's six. Yeah, McAllister, eight carries for 71 yards and a touchdown in the fourth quarter alone. Jerry, I want to just say, uh, there's the scoring drive. Uh, U26, again, uh, started from the 35-yard line to the 25-yard line. Nine plays, Stuart Patridge getting used to that against Old, or against Mississippi State, took his team down for the winning score and in a two-point conversion and the, again tonight. But it's been fun working with you. Uh, enjoyed it very much. Well, I've enjoyed it too, A great ball game. Uh, as you said, this is what the bowl season's all about. Well, uh, don't forget Sports Center coming up next. All the highlights of what happened here tonight. Games around the country. The NBA. What's going to come up in National Car Rental Bowl Week in college football? Just getting ticked off. Not over yet, Jerry. Two timeouts. A lot of time to get down there to kick that tying field goal. And Lindsey kicks it halfway to Wisconsin. Out of the end zone. That's big. Did not want to give Randy Moss a chance to grab that football. Well, do you think they'll double Randy Moss here? Uh, I think they'll triple team him well, at this point. Trip him? You said they'll trip him? I they'll, they'll do that, too. I agree with you. They'll trip him. <laughs> well, folks, Randy Moss, uh, a Heisman candidate to the end. Outstanding season. Well, and if he does decide to leave the Thundering Herd, what a career he's had at Marshall. What a great effort for Marshall University up in Huntington, West Virginia. Pennington and intended for Moss. Gary Fickman there in the coverage. 25 seconds to play. Jerry, this Mid-American Conference made themselves proud tonight with this effort by this Marshall football team. They won their league. They they had a, a, a playoff game with Toledo, beat a very good Toledo team who beat Purdue, uh, an outstanding team. This is a very good conference to oh, Mid-American. I, I totally agree. And, of course, you can't say enough about Tommy Tuberville, what he has done at Ole Miss in three years. As the pass is overthrown, in three years at Ole Miss has never lost a non-conference football game. He is a perfect 9-0 at Ole Miss. That's pretty good. He has 68 kids on scholarship. 68 of those, 10 are walk-ons. He has 58 legitimate Division I college football players on this football team, and he went 7-4 and four in the SEC. He's done a nice job. SEC Coach of the Year. He did it. And Marshall's done a very good job. Uh, one double A moving up to Division One this year, and they show you how tough the Division One double A teams are around the country. This is a good football team. All right, over the middle, and Moss has it at the 35-yard line. That will stop the clock. Good enough for the first down. 12 seconds. Rock Clyde's raising down, and now Moss is uh, slow in getting up. He's got to kill the clock right here. Marshall with two timeouts I left. I don't think they have any timeouts left, right? They, they got two on the board here. They're going to take one here. There's a little confusion on how many they have. Call timeout. All right. What they were trying to do, Jerry, was a first down play, and they were trying to line up real quick and kill the clock and save the timeout. And don't forget Sports Center coming up very shortly. 12 seconds to play. Pippen speaks of Michigan Syracuse hoop highlights, NFL playoff previews. Speaking of NFL playoffs, how about uh, the performance here in this field last week by Barry Sanders? Congratulations. 2,000 yards in the season, the only the third time in the NFL history that a back has done it. O.J. Simpson and Eric Dickerson. 184 yards rushing by Barry Sanders to put the Lions in the playoffs. NFC wildcard game at Tampa Bay on Sunday. How about Ward Dunn? Rookie of the year this year. Uh, boy, out of Florida State, a great young man there, too. Another great role model. Exceptional young man, both on and off the play field. I tell you, Chad Pennington tonight, folks, has uh, put his name in front of the uh, audiences around the country as a uh, uh, future uh, big-time quarterback. He's got a big-time arm and a, and a great quarterback mind. Twelve seconds to play. Pennington back to pass, looking downfield, and has Moss 
two has it. Oh, the ball is stripped three. And brought twice, stripped the football. And the officials say it is Ole Miss football with one second on the clock. Yeah, you pick up the hymnals now. Church is out here with Brock Price making that play. And how about how appropriate is the fact that Nate Wayne, who wears the number 38, the Chucky Mullins Courage Award, he is the man who recovers the fumble. Well, Marshall's really upset. Chad Pennington threw his uh, helmet and... did not like that call. on the sideline. Randy Moss getting free. Strickland just misses the play, and let's see what happens. Brock Price, number 14, pulls it out. Nate Wayne on the recovery. One second to play, and uh, there's the frustration. But what a great effort by Chad Pennington. And so the inaugural Motor City Bowl. The Ford Motor City Bowl goes to Ole Miss. Once again, our final score, Ole Miss 34, Marshall 31. Coming up next is Sports Center. For Mike Godfrey, Dave Rod, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Jerry Punch. Good night from Pontiac, Michigan. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader 